Welcome, folks, to Wednesday Night Modern here at Nerd Rage Gaming in lovely Buffalo Grove, Illinois. We're in week 11 of 12 of our Modern League, and we are super excited to see what players bring tonight. My name is Aviva Goodman, alongside Dominic Stryker. How you doing tonight, Dom? <laughs> We're okay. almost there. We're this... almost done with this league, our very first league in the store, I guess. I don't know. I don't know the lore of, <laughs> of Nerd Rage, but uh, since I've been here, at least, and we're super excited to give away over a $1,000 in prize Gee, money. my goodness. Yeah. Uh, very, very exciting. A very, very, very important detail, I think, to all people watching, competing, anyone who's been following along. Adam Weiss, number one <laughs> on the leaderboard. This is Adam's final week. Adam will be out of town for the actual finale of the league, which means tonight is their final <laughs> proving ground to try to stay as far ahead as they possibly can because the clock is over tonight. Yeah, absolutely. He needs to increase his lead by as much as possible because everyone else is getting one more week. I will say, yes. though, the people behind him have also missed a week at some mm. point in the league. So... But most of the players at the top have played the same number of weeks. But um, the difference the is less than an undefeated night between Correct. like one, two, a, and three. There's a seven point difference between uh, first and second, Adam and George, 106 to 99. And then Marty's at 97, Ray's at 90, Alex 89, Danny 86, Valerie 82, and Tepper Ooh. at 81 rounds up our top eight as it stands right now. Let's get down to <laughs> yeah. the magic that's going on right now. Took a moment to step away. We got a DRC, <laughs> we got a suspended Rift Bolt, and our Merc type player is off to the races, turn number two. DRC Bobble works just the same on turn two as it does on turn one. Indeed, it do. It's been a quick minute since we've seen Merc Tide on stream, but it's obviously still a very popular deck. I don't think it's seen too many changes mm. with uh, Karlov aside from. Probably some surveil land seems all oh, right yeah. in the deck. A thundering fall or two would not be a bad thing. Oh, I see uh, two EIs yes. in Brennan's hand. That seems great. I also see this breeding pool, which which hints at a questing druid, perhaps in his deck. Yes, uh, I haven't seen. I have indeed seen the questing druids when they were shuffling up, and I give them a little pregame announcement. Mm -hmm. But I have a question for you. Sure. When you're playing at a local level. Mm -hmm. Do you keep your game one seven as if you're playing in the blind, or do you use the information like assuming Adam is your local burn player? Do you mulligan game one for a burn hand? Um, that's a really good question. I usually like to play as if I'm in the blind because I like to practice the practice, of course, the, those fundamentals. Um, with the league being where it is, I feel like I might oh, play a yep. little tighter. Um. Adam is used to being known as the burn guy, so mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't think I think he's used to being a little bit behind everyone else in that respect. I I sort yes. of do the same thing. I feel like everyone always knows what I'm playing, yeah, um, so I, I'm used to being on a little bit of that back foot. I want to ask this because Brendan kept a, kept a hand of shock on turn one, shock on turn two, mm. ei ei preordained. Okay, that means you're doing <laughs> diddly for so long. And if you if you are keeping a hand in such like, hey, I know my opponent is on burn, or uh, one of my favorite things at energy events is like this opponent gives me X deck vibes, mm -hmm. and I'm going to mulligan accordingly. If you just like feel burn in your bones, this hand is a hand that I think loses the game 99 percent of the time absolutely adam hasn't played any creatures, so this dragon's rage channeler is hanging and obviously enabling the the um, non-creature spell mechanic with uh, their surveil triggers there. So um, Brennan's getting some good value out of this hand for sure. It's definitely like a Merktide hand. But yeah, like you said, um, the double shock, the fetch yep. is down to nine life. So three. But they're they're dead in hand to Adam and they can't cast the counter two. spell. I see and we have a riff pulled on suspend. And suspend. Got it. Yep. We're, uh, we are very dead right now. <laughs> a b and a part of this is just we dealt five damage to ourself. Mm-hmm. On top of that, we spent our early turns spinning wheels, looking through their EIs. Now we have a hand with subtlety on Holy Heat, pick your poison. As all these cards are just blank. We have a counter spell, but we already used our mana this turn to EI, possibly to find said counter spell. That's a crazy it's attack to me. He's got hasty creatures, man. I if, believe if you he must. <laughs> no, he only hit for a single point. He's not delirious. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's important to play around the creatures, but the creatures all attack for typically two-ish. Because mm -hmm. if Adam had three burn spells, you're dead already. Right. Um, so I think at a minimum, Brendan's, that choice would have gone to one. Yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, I don't know 
Interestingly enough, I think Adam had the kill, but played around uh, Brendan having Fetch for Island Spell Pierce he for did. this bolt, and, and now, now we've allowed Counterspell. Exactly, yeah. Now we have the mana for Counterspell, so that leaves us alive a little bit longer, but it also mm -hmm. forces us to um, <laughs> tap out. Well, no, not tap out, but use the only counter magic in our hand. Yeah, I think Adam's plan is to... Uh, we have an inspiring vantage in play, and I believe another in hand. Or I'm sorry, a uh, Sunbay Canyon, mm -hmm. the cycling land. I think our plan is to get to two, maybe three burn spells to fire them all off to overload counter magic to get through these last three mm -hmm. points of damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have to assume that whole hand is stacked, right? You've already played around Pierce, which means you've given your opponent a free copy of Pierce that doesn't exist. So you have to play around that Pierce now <laughs> for the rest of the game. We've seen two EIs resolve as well, so you've got to imagine there's some good stuff in there, that too. That they took the goods, yeah. yeah. And now the issue is Brendan is still forced to work off two mana per turn mm -hmm. because fetching with these lands is going to put you down to two. If you fetch again, it's going to put you down to one. Your opponent's at 17. Your burn opponent has a lot of time. Yeah. These Dragon's Rage Channelers, though, are going to enable us to get a little bit yeah. of value, dig a little bit deeper. We're trying to get that fourth card type, but interestingly, we've already gone to combat. We have. Uh, we may have wanted to pre, uh, pre combat main phase that DRC get these surveils and try to get something like this, the salty in the bin, to get that attack for three. Yep, yep. So Adam should uh, optimally be at fourteen here, but it's all good. He's. <laughs> we have to. And now Adam has cycled, and we have two burn spells in hand. We have mm -hmm. Boros Charm and Lightning Bolt. Which means at this point, if we fire off both of those, your opponent needs to have the spell pierce you believed they had and counter spell and the ability to survive through cracking both these fetch lands. I feel like you can s comfortably fetch once. Mm hmm. Except, I uh. I think that's fine. Honestly, I feel like you could do it twice. <laughs> right. It's it's all one burn spell regardless, right? Yep, down to two. What this does now is it unlocks play with fire for Adam as a kill condition. For sure, yeah. When when you're playing against Adam specifically, there is play with fire to worry mm -hmm. about. A lot of people say, right, when you're doing burn math, like mm -hmm. the difference between two and three is nothing. Yeah. Two and three is a little something. If a you think little of something, it. yep. Um, And if Adam can take their time, if we don't feel prepared to do it on our turn, we can pass the turn back to Brendan. Brendan's DRC is must attack, mm -hmm. which taps him out of blockers if we happen to draw some late game creatures. For sure, yeah. We haven't seen any creatures yet from Adam's hand or deck. Which uh, is preferred if they saw all the cards in Brendan's hands, this subtlety, this unholy heat, and so forth. Mm -hmm. We've stranded a lot of cards. Mm -hmm. Sitting with just a fetch uncracked now, Adam drew a skewer the yeah. critics too. We have three burn spells now, and our opponent has a single land untapped. It's go time. It's go time, but first we're going to fetch real quick. Because we have uh, Skewer the Critics, mm -hmm. Boros Charm, and Bolt. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can start on one of those, try to force counter magic, and then push the other two through. So Brendan needs to have the Pierce and a Force and a second Force. Right. All right, and this Bolt, I assume, went upstairs. Yep, and it's it's met with none of the counter magic. Adam was playing around a lot of it. It wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Played slowly to allow themselves time, especially because the Merktide opponent gave them some time, used it to their advantage, played slowly, banked up, and threw it all upstairs. Absolutely. Let's go to sideboards here and check out deck list. First, we're looking at Brendan's. Is this his submitted deck list? Perfect. It is. So we got his full 75 that he's rocking with here. We got Flusterstorms, Surgical Extraction, Brotherhood End, uh, Dismember, Mystical Dispute, Engineered Explosives, Relic of Progenitus, Dress Down, and Blood Moons for his tools in his sideboard. Okay, so at a minimum, Flusterstorm has a good amount of text to it just because the burn spells themselves are instants and sorceries. Mm -hmm. And between your combination of Unholy Heat and Bolt, as well as kind of having blockers of your own, can allow you to play well into the creature package. So this allows you to shore up all of the spell half of it. I can imagine cashing in a card uh, like these Tishana's Tide Binders. Uh, Brennan's playing a little spice mm -hmm. in their Merc Tide. Uh, uh, one of the strengths of the Murktide deck is playing cards that typically cost one or two mana, Murktide deceptively being a two-drop, right? And in this case, we're playing a little bit more of a mid rangey game, trying out these Tide Binders. But when you play against Burn, mid range does not exist. There is only the beginning of the game. Absolutely. I think the Tide Binders are an easy cut here. Bring in the counter magic. Um... And if you're scared of the creature plan, you could lean on some number of engineered explosives, play this for one, and pop it. 
because I'm already not that interested in maybe having all these Ragavans in my deck either. I was going to say, I really like the Ragavans in the deck. We can rip stuff off of his deck that we can oh, we use. We can play most of it. Yeah. So I, I like keeping the Ragavans in. We're on the play as well. So that, that makes it even better. Um, the Unholy Heats. Uh, you definitely th- can trim some of the, the firepower. So. Yeah. Uh, but the Lightning Bolt's obviously keeping, yeah. Um, yeah, things aren't getting bigger, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Your Lightning Bolt will hit any creature outside of a double prowess Monastery Swift Spear. So you don't need to try that hard to trigger Delirium like you do with Unholy Heat. So these might be some easy ones to shave. And possibly this one of Spell Snare. Spell Snare hitting only two drops. You have to think through your like burn Rolodex. You're like, okay, this could hit. Eidolon of the Great Revel if they're playing it, but we didn't see any creatures game one. Mm -hmm. And that hits Boros Charm. You know the charm's there, but the question is how many cards do you want for how narrow they could be to interact? All right, we'll take a look at Adam's sideboard if we get to a game three. And even if we don't, we'll take a look at it just in case. If you (laughs) want to look at any of the deck lists that we feature tonight, check out our Discord. That's where they will all be located. Into game two, though, now Brennan will be on the play. Oh, and Brennan's got a stern scolding. I may have missed that when we were going through the deck. That helps, too, because it'll hit any possible creature that's in Adam's deck. Mm-hmm. You but, mentioned it, yeah. Or Spell Snare you were talking yeah. about, excuse me, not Stern. Um, and the other thing, I know Adam has brought in and out of his sideboard Exquisite Firecraft, mm-hmm. the Spell Mastery Uncounterable uh, Burn Spell. Good oh. against Control, there good against go. Murktide, as we see Stern Scolding coming up on the one drop. Yeah, we finally see a creature from Adam there, and the Goblin Guide quickly sternly scolded. <laughs> you gotta yell at that Goblin. <laughs> Get out of here, dude. Preordain will be the play here. We do have a counter spell proper in Brennan's hand that he could hold up. But I think we're looking to get a couple more tools first. We can let a bolt or two go through. And it might be a land drop question. I know that's sometimes one of the hardest parts is just making sure you can make your land drop so mm-hmm. you can play in a slightly like mid-game with Boros here. But I see it looks like we already had two lands rolled up. So not too much of a problem there. But making sure get the preordain out now so you can interact for the rest of the game. Ooh, I see an Eidolon floating in the right side of Adam's hand there. We'll just go for the Goblin Guide play instead, playing a little more cautiously. I think pretty good um, decision mm-hmm. there as well. Amisha's Bobble will be revealed off the top on the Goblin Guide attack. And we'll go to 18 all. 17 from the Pain Land and a Rift Bolt, or excuse me, Lava Spike. Lava Spike. Will bring us to 15 to 17. Now Brennan can safely crack and bring in uh, a tapped Shockland at the very least. Thundering Falls, maybe? Thundering Falls, We didn't sure. get a check uh, fast enough on the mana base, but oh, also Breeding Pool for our Splash. There you go. Yeah, because the Questing Druid is in hand currently. And we saw Brennan had main deck copies of Pick Your Poison as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, relying on that green Splash may not be the most relevant here against Adam. I think Pick Your Poison may have no targets, but if it's in your deck and you draw it, you sure want to be able to cast it. Absolutely. Looking at Adam's hand, we have uh, another Lava Spike, uh, a Horizon Land. The Idol out of the Great Rebel, and someone's secret all the way on the edge. Mm-hmm. Brennan's hand looks pretty good, too. We'll see what he's able to do here against this burned deck, drawing the oh. Mishra's Bobble, of course, for turn. We did all that effort to shuffle away the Bobble we saw off the guide. Mm-hmm. Still a Bobble on top. Oh, right. We did shuffle, and then we drew... <laughs> Because that's one of the interesting parts about playing against Goblin Guide specifically mm. is if you don't draw a land, you get kind of a pseudo scry. You see your top card, and that's kind of the bobble trick. People who will bobble themselves before fetching to see if they really want to go get a land. Brendan had an uncracked fetch, saw a bobble, and whether they wanted to go get tapped land or not, it allowed like a little extra added piece of that. I can't imagine you really want to draw a bobble. You want to draw a card that does something. Exactly. So we would have shuffled it away there, I think, there no matter what. But Brendan on the hunt for a tap land also just adds that complexity. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, so we didn't get a survey land there, just the breeding pool to fix his third color of mana. A little bit in the tank here on what he wants mm-hmm. to do. We'll play the Spire Bluff Canal as land for turn Yeah, and pass back. I love playing the Spire Bluff here. The other land of choice was the Steam Vents, but this way we can get the untapped Spire Bluff, take no damage. Next oh, yeah. turn, play the tapped Steam Vents, continue to take no damage. Your your pace of play really changes when your opponent is aggressively after your life total. Eidolon will come down and get quickly counterspelled there. And we'll swing in with the Goblin Guide once again, revealing... The Tidebinder. The Tidebinder. So those stayed in. And I wonder for Adam if that Eidolon was kind of bait, because we have so many cards in our hand that also trigger it, that you're kind of like, this will eat a counterspell to free up the rest of my hand. Indeed, indeed. Skewer off the... Um, oh, Spectacle Trigger? 
cost one bring Brennan down to nine. Bring Brennan down to three. Yep. Three burn spells. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, drawing that Tishana's Tidebinder. And this is what I was saying oh, when we were talking about Cyborg. This so sorry to interrupt you. There's a play with fire in his hand, so the math is hey. actually different. But the Goblin <laughs> got to help the burn math, right? For sure, for sure. See, we have this Tidebinder, and this is going to be three mana uh, in this matchup. It like, feels very mid, yeah. Now, the card is incredible when you're playing a lot of matchups, right? Absolutely, but there's no stif things I really want to stifle from Adam. Um, You can stifle a Goblin guy, technically, a Monastery. No, you can't mm. stifle a Prowess trigger. Oh, you can. Oh, you can't. No, that is triggered. Um, You could stifle cracking a Horizon land. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, not too many super relevant interactions there. We'll cast an EI, though. And interesting, I would say just tapping from Brendan. So we had Breeding Pool, Spire Bluff, Island. And they cast our EI. We used, nah, I guess it doesn't matter, right? Because you, <laughs> you have to use the red source from the Spire Bluff. Yeah. It was just like we left up a green source, which felt like, well, what are we using the green for? But Breeding Pool is just a better island <laughs> um but our ei saw ragavan fetch fetch all three of those i do not want to see at all not at all we'll play out this bauble with no um excuse me drc to surveil with but i think we just want the card draw at this point yep and here's this goblin guide coming on in seeing a drc and we know that our opponent has tidebinder in hand mm -hmm. so we know one of these overall four cards in the same deal, our opponent would have to fetch to get access to Counterspell. They could be using a Spell Pierce here, but we're going all the way down to four. And, oh, who could it be? Is that mm -hmm. Boros Charm? <laughs> Are we going to take two damage cast as Boros Charm? I think we're going to wait until we can hold up Pay for Pierce. Sure, sure. Adam, Adam, a burned lifer, <laughs> will do things that you will not understand when trying to get through like the last few points. Calling him a burn lifer makes it seem like it's... He's an arsonist? <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, but that's a very good point as well. It's like um, the burn deck is like his atlas like boulder to like bear. Oh, yeah. He's holding the whole thing up. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, Mangu could put it at, at a D on the Mangu, tier list, but it doesn't matter here. I got to I gotta uh, talk uh -oh. to that guy, man. Uh -oh. Wait, like, check out our league. This guy is really good. This deck is fire. We got a Literally. let's go Adam in chat. I agree. Let's go Adam. Woohoo. But he's been let's crushing. Let's go Brendan. It. Yeah. I know it's so hard to I, I can't I want to cheer for everyone. I want That's everyone the best part. to win. That's the best part <laughs> about commentary and doing it doing a league here with locals is we know them, we love them, we want to see all of them succeed. And what that does, it leads to good magic. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen some great games over our 11 weeks here. Uh, the <laughs> The Polish takeover week, oh, crazy gosh. good magic. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's some of the best we've had. But our locals are nothing to to sneer at either. They they've brought a ton of great gameplay as well. Boros Charm upstairs. Here we Look go. at your hand of five cards. Do any of them do anything? And the answer is no. Drew so many lands. I I, I just gotta say, if that Tidebinder was a fluster, it would have felt better, but it wouldn't have mattered. Just a pile of burn being pushed. Mm -mm. Yeah, Adam will take down a clean two. Oh, there we'll bring up his deck real quick, just so people can get a peek at it. You gotta get a peek at the burn deck. I'm yeah, sure there's time. Here's here's the chong chong. Here's the stuff. That classic uh, five by three sideboard. There, Strict Proctor, Path to Exile, Whale Tear. Wear tear, engineered explosives, and roiling vortex, and look at all these fun things. Look at those new OTJ basics on the bottom. Thank you, Scryfall. Thank you, Scryfall. All right, and we'll head into our backup match here. If you want to see more of that deck, head to our Discord. Backup match is Alex, oh, number five on the leaderboard against May, newly in town, lands in front, crushing oh. with Merfolk. <laughs> This is the basics mirror. This is the basics mirror. It is. We got Mono B Coffers <laughs> Islands. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's catch up here. It looks like on Alex right now resolving a Thoughtseize, so we're going to see a lot of May's hand. Alex has a ring on two, but May has maybe one of the most beloved cards in the Grixis Lutri deck. So if you <laughs> want to get like really deep, right, Svalune of Sea and Sky mm -hmm. is such a good card that people try to find other cards of this effect. And the one spot you can play a whole bunch of them is Merfolk. Mm -hmm. There was even a mono blue tempo deck at one point. Where like one of the only creatures in the deck was Svelun, alongside it's like counter magic and interaction. Interesting. Okay. So this card 
good. <laughs> Alex's life total higher than I thought it would be around turn five with a ring in play. Yeah, he does have the ring, so there was a fog effect at some point here. And I see two hex catchers uh, in the graveyard. One got um, thought seized. And one must have countered the Liliana the Veil that's in the bin. Ooh, I think so. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to sacrifice the hex catcher proper to counter something. It and hurts, but I've done it. Merfolk, while it's picking up popularity here, not the most popular overall. You might be able to just catch someone with the four spike mode of flash in your hex catcher. Yep, absolutely. Our our um players are a little bit aware of Merfolk because we do have the other local. And the number has right doubled now. now. Indeed, yeah, we have twice as many Merfolk <laughs> players in the building now. As a march of wretched sorrow for X equals kills Faelun on the stack. <laughs> Getting that card out of here and gaining a good chunk of life. Yeah, Sphalen only gives other merfolk hexproof. Or Ward 1, excuse me. Yeah, <laughs> shout out in the chat. Someone talking about Adam playing uh, say, a Scion Leyline. Adam did. Adam played that a couple of weeks. Uh, trying out putting the good cards in burn, as they say. Uh, but it is Adam's last week, so had to make it rumble as May's getting the beatdowns here with subtlety. Absolutely. Gained a little bit of life off the March of Wretched Sorrow, so we're down to 19 to May's 20. Late, late in the Aether, game, late Aether on the vial. vial. No counter magic to get around there with the vial, but it's nice to have. Spend I, some mana, or save some mana. And I love, we have the Tishana's Tidebinder. So we're doing this dance between if Alex does or doesn't activate their ring, because mm -hmm. you don't want to get mm -hmm. it bopped by the binder. But what May also gets to do is hold up this subtlety for any actions Alex does take for their turn. If you try to play off like a big Karn or something, subtlety's be able to interact with that. So so Alex does have a Karn in hand. I think what you do is activate the ring, bait the Tishana's tie binder. To resolve that Karn. To resolve the Karn, except subtlety you can just evoke, mm -hmm. which you can But you take their lose. whole hand. You take the whole hand, right. But the issue is, is the only thing left over is a 3-3 beater. Indeed, indeed. So we'll see exactly what line Alex takes here. Alex used to play Merfolk as well, I should point out. That's how we met cool. when I was a fledgling modern player. <laughs> uh, uh, birds of a feather flock together, but it's uh, folk folk <laughs> of a mer go together. Fish, fish swim together. The fish do be swimming. They do. And we, we have what may or may not be bait, as you were saying, of activate ring response of this Tide Tidebinder. Because... Oh, but Alex has a fatal push, but I don't know if it's revolted. But it looks like we are using this, in fact, to sneak in this Karn. Yeah, May taking a look down at her hand, seeing an answer yeah. to, to the well, spell currently on the stack. If you but put we gotta... this Karn back in hand, you get to attack for six, mm -hmm. put Alex down to 11. Alex untaps and spends most of their turn on a Karn, and then you can put Alex down to five. So the question is, is do you believe what they find off Karn and cast next turn? Mm -hmm is worth stifling your overall game plan. I should also point out, now that the ring is blank, he won't be taking damage from the bird encounters either. Mm -hmm. So that, that changes some of the math there too. But it might also help our math in the fact that we're applying this aggression, mm -hmm. which is going to force Alex to find answers to the aggression. And if you do, then you start hitting yourself again. All right, Alex going to grab a big blocker here in this worm coil engine. We will have enough mana to cast it next turn. We also have this cling to life sitting in our hand. Oh yeah, I've Alex is the only person I've seen cast cling to dust over and over to just gain a, chunks of life to survive games. Excuse me, did I say cling to life? Yeah. Is it cling to dust? It is. Okay, for sure. <laughs> That's what Alex did last time he cast that spell on camera. Over and over to survive and Yo. eventually won that game. Oh, such a crazy game. Oh my gosh, if you guys did not see that match, you need to go back in the VODs and check it out. His match against Marty was crazy it's and also on our youtube channel as well yeah, youtube.com slash at nerd rage gaming check out all the vods there yeah lots of good gameplay there i think i'm on there at least once this i love may let the karn resolve last turn mm -hmm. attacked and killed the karn and now when alex goes to play the worm coil that's met with the second subtlety that we got to hold up so like perfectly like mapped out to apply the most aggression while really fiddling with alex's plan i think that both subtleties are in play now oh yeah yeah, yeah. It's and go they, time. they fly over the uh, the worm crawl there as well. Lots of damage. Woo. All right, bringing Alex down to four. And now if Alex does find something like a damnation, mm -hmm. well, then your ring goes back to dealing you damage. So it it's a very slippery slope both ways. Indeed, worm coil, the draw there. But we can attack with both the flyers and ignore the worm coil. Indeed, we can. We do have the cling to life, which will bring us to one. Right, because it gains three. 
Oh, if we use this cling to dust, we have to target cling to a dust. I keep creature. I keep this name in it. Uh, it it cares about what you target. It either draws a card or gains some life. Right. I assume we have the target we want. We're yeah. hitting the card to oh, draw. Oh, he wants a card. to draw. <gasps> okay. We should draw on profane <laughs> command. All right. Alex's gonna up. take a read at this card. I think we should bring it up too. It's got a couple of modes on it there. And we can do profane <laughs> command x equals three, which I believe can gain us three life and kill something. Yeah. Uh, so choose two. Target player loses X. Return target creature mana value X to the battlefield. Target creature gets minus X. Or up to X gain fear. So if we do X equals three to gain three and give something minus three, we will go to seven. No, there's no gain. It's just target player loses. Oh, oh my goodness. I thought the first mode was gain. <laughs> yeah, so just no life gain available. Trying to figure out what the modes were. Yeah, was there any way to get out of there there? Wonder why he didn't push the tide binder with revolt from the Karn. Might have possibly not wanted to put themselves in the squeeze to take damage from that ring. Mm -hmm. If we had unlocked it, yeah, we gain access to some cards, but we're at four and our life was ticking down quickly. And with that, that is the game. Our Merfolk player taking it down two games to zero. Coffers tried to fight back. We saw just like the Coffers thing outside of Coffers proper. Getting Karn, getting Wormcoil, getting Thoughtseize, March of Wretched Sorrow. These are all the cards you want to play. But th the Merfolk deck is full of just counter spells on bodies. They'll put you away quickly. Absolutely. Great stuff there from our backup match. We'll head into a break. But first, let's take a look at our leaderboard as it stands currently. Ooh. We have 47, 48 unique players in the league. The prize right. pool over $1,000. Here's your top eight. Currently, Adam Weiss, George Jabor, Martin Slowinski, Ray Ray Bosque, Alex Luke, Danny. I, I really screwed myself hit, over I'll hit you trying with a, to say a, the last name. I'll hit you with a Pacione. Danny Pacione, Valerie Strong, and Brian Tepper is your top eight currently. But here. not far behind is the second half mm. here. Take a look at all these players. You see these arrows. People have been moving up and down. Every single one of these weeks. Our top eight in the room. I know nines here. I know tens here. I know twelves here. And I know sixteens here. So a lot of these mm -hmm. folks are still here fighting. We can even go through that top eight. Adam Weiss here. Jamming Boros Burn. The entire top eight's here. Oh, yeah. George yeah. Jabor here. Jamming Blue White Control. Marty's here. Jamming, is it Domain Rhinos? I think it's Rhinos, yeah. We it's got to be some. Ray Ray on uh, Domain Cards He Likes. He said, it's he... This week he called it Domain Arc Reanimator. Oh, we'll have to find out what that means. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Alex Luke, who we just uh, saw rocking it out there with the Coffers deck. Right. We have Danny, one of our uh, tried Yog. and true Yogmoth oh, players. Yeah. Valerie on my personal favorite, <laughs> uh, playing a little Gorios out there. Shout out. And then Brian Tepper on what I believe is Big Rhinos. We'll have to see if we can find out later. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see if we can get him on coverage at some point. Uh, that'll wrap up round one coverage, though, before we head into round two. We're going to take a quick break, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. See you all soon. Welcome back, folks. We're in round 204 here at Wednesday Night Modern. We got two good old regulars in the feature match area. We got Kai on Grizzy Wizzies and Sam on his usual pimped out hammer deck. We are oh, rocking yeah. Mono White today mono versus white a blue splash he's been messing with a little bit. We'll see how these games shake out here. Looks like Sam's mulling. Sam mulls a lot on camera. Uh, Sam, I think... <laughs> um, prescribes to the disgruntled elk Travis mono white hammer plan mm -hmm. of keep the good hands. Sure. Yeah. And, keep and, the hands that kill your opponent. Right. And a lot, I have found that when you play hammer, some hands look unbeatable. You're like, <laughs> Oh wow. It's really this easy. And then some hands look unplayable. Yeah, And it's absolutely. very hard to find a middle. Like a hammer, the deck can be very swingy in the... Okay, okay. <laughs> Everybody, it's been so great. Uh, we will see you next week. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, not going to top that. All right, yeah. cool. Um, And I think a part of this uh, aggressive mulliganing, how the deck is kind of a zero or a hundred sometimes, mm -hmm. I think is also a testament on why you want to play the blue package because mm -hmm. it adds a mid-range plan. Sure, yeah, counter spells and draw draw spells. At, at least spell pierce and cryptic coat. Mm -hmm. And I think a part of that is... Ooh, I you, haven't seen coat yeah, yet. You can mulligan, you know, you can keep a four that's like land, land, stoneforge interaction piece because mm -hmm. you know that stoneforge is finding the coat and that allows you to just have like an actual game. 
The hard part is this mold of four really needs to beat a counter spell. It do, it do. We know Kai plays a, a good number of them. Right, Kai's signature cards are counter spell and snapcaster mage and Ragavan. <laughs> What's this? It's an, he's an honorary wizard. Okay. Oh right. right. Sorry. Sorry. On the honorary wizard list <laughs> is Ragavan, Dothy, Orcus Spellmaster, and Shieldred. Yes, exactly. But what about the honorary uh, turn one ornithopter Sigarda's aid? Do you wish to die next turn? It seems pretty good, I gotta say. Do you think the four is Plains Ornithopter Aid Hammer? Oh, gosh, that'd be pretty sick. I didn't get a glimpse at his hand. Oh. See, I'm obviously not blocking here. We'll see what the Ragavan hits. Spring Leaf Drum? You can have it. Sure. Go for it. And. We've got a treasure. Is the die there? And Grizzy Wizzy may not be entirely correct. Kai might be on Blue Moon. Oh, really? Kai loved a Blue Moon. Kai liked to switch it up a lot, yeah. And I see Rogren Triumph. Ooh. I see Flame of Anor. We're on Jeskai with it. seems a very smart uh, Flame of Anor for sure. All right. Well, are we going to shock ourselves or bolt ourselves? No. And Esper, Esper Sentinel, Sentinel is a solid backup against a spells heavy deck like Kai's. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that means at least whatever they use to interact. Oh, okay, never the mind. The quick block. You saw the speed it of that. It did, yeah. Okay. All right, so we won't use the Esper Sentinel to draw at all. We will just kill the Ragavan there. And a quick flip of a card, which oh. means we've drawn another of these lands. Wow, okay. What's this last card in hand? It's another signed one. Is it another aid? What oh. is it? What you got there, Sam? Just a couple land go, land pass. We drew Steel Shaper's Gift. So this is the, the interesting, right? This is the one of, right, in the deck? Yeah. Pretty good and, pull. And it's kind of the counter spell versus tutors, if you ever had this debate. Mm -hmm. Do you counter the tutor or do you counter what they tutor for? Oh, yeah. I learned that lesson pretty early on, I'd say. We're Some getting good hammer. teachers. Classic hammer. Classic hammer. Beautiful hammer. You got to get it. Yeah. Oh, I have to say, I think the the Lost Cairns of Ixalan bonus sheet is the prettiest bonus sheet. Oh, oh, that's a really good question, though. There's some good bonus sheets. Correct. <laughs> but this one... <laughs> Thank you. These ones are gorgeous. I know, yeah. I saw the uncut sheet at, I want to say, oh, Eternal Weekend, and it, it was stunning. Oh, Surveil and Alert. Wii U, Wii U, Thundering Falls has entered the chat. Yeah, I thought we were going to see it last round in the Merc Tide list. We but didn't there's, get a glimpse at it. They're like splashing green. They're right, splashing sure. Green. It means you can splash another Surveil land. Oh, boy, it does. Put it. a hedge maze in there. I don't know, but maybe. <laughs> uh, and we see uh, Kai seems to be hitting their lands no problem, so we mill over a Loring with the Surveil. Not interest for more lands mm -hmm. and tapping out to draw three while appealing could spell certain death against a hammer opponent sometimes. Indeed. Yeah, it looks like Sam, the, I mean, the mold four is rough, yeah, and we've dealt with all the things that he's played so far. He has a hammer in hand we know about, and he's got two, two cigar to yeah. so double I think double just equips. the hardest part is uh -huh. your opponent is playing main deck Flame of Anor, which yeah. has... It just has Shatter on it, right? Yeah, it just has anti your deck written on it mm -hmm. for a card that's already powerful. Yeah, yeah. And two damage. The, it does, it, no, it's five, five damage. Five damage. Oh, gosh. Yeah, five damage, That'll draw kill, two, shatter. Everything. It kills a cauldron token, even. If How it crazy. tries hard enough. Well, it's indestructible, right? Yeah. So then never mind. Pardon. As we see a tap C event. So like I said, Kai hitting Ooh. their land drop. And now. Tidebinder targeting your Urza saga. Oh, yeah. Now it loses all abilities. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't, because it's not a creature, artifact, or a planeswalker. We're good. It loses it for the turn. It loses just the exact trigger. It gets that trigger stifled, but it's very important it doesn't lose abilities, which means Sam doesn't outright lose their saga. Oh, right. That's how it interacts with Blood Moon. Right. Mm -hmm. So for a second, I was like, oh, no, not another reason the Tide Binder is good. Yeah. But it is not a creature, artifact, or planeswalker, so we're in the clear. doesn't need any more reasons. No, it's card rules. Card is gas. Big Ar fan. Archmage's Charm Alert as Kai tops out <laughs> with the Prudin and draws it. So the card I'm always getting, trying to get George to play. I Ganjo Ooh. the Tide Binder. You, you just have to, right? You, you've drawn a card. The card mm -hmm. interacts. It's time to interact. I did that interaction the opposite way. I Tide Bindered and I Ganjo. Oh. <laughs> this weekend you saw it. Yeah, remember? When, when your opponent learns that the channel ability is stifleable. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was fun. I felt very big brain there. Yes. And 
Who could it be? Is this Gingy B? <laughs> nice rhyme. Okay. Yeah, I rhymed B with B. I didn't try that hard. <laughs> but what's very important is we're activating it, and we know there's a hammer in hand. The question is, Is are you going to push through six untapped mana? It's um, call MC Hammer because it's... Hammer time. It's hammer time. But the question is, is it's, hammer arc, time. It, it's Archmage's charm time. It's Archmage's charm time. Kai, Give Kai, me your Kai, ginger Kai, brew. Kai, it. Give Kai, me the ginger take brew. It. Kai, take, take it. it. Take, take it. Take it. Yes. yes. <laughs> Way better mode than counterspell there. Of course. Yeah, no. He let that hammer resolve. He's like, don't don't yeah. worry about that. This is my ginger brew. <laughs> Get you. 11. <laughs> That's so great. Oh, my gosh. That's a win condition. Oh, dang. Wow, for a deck that didn't have win conditions, you know, outside of like Tidebinder snap beats, stealing an 11 11 will get the job done. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. Well, Sam? <laughs> Any responses? Hey, Sam? Hey, buddy? Well, Top deck? Ooh, oh! That's a turn too late. Yeah, that Sam surge knew of salvation. It too. Wow, we did have double hammer. If we had the surge and the double hammer, we at least survive the charm oh, and possibly man. more that turn. Oh man! But it was not in the cards, and we're off to game number two. Let's take a little peek, skip, poo at the deck list. All right, first up, we got Sam's list here, rocking sixty-one <laughs> cards. Let's talk about it. This Whoa. is an old deck list, though. This is the scamp one. No, wait, he he submitted today. I think I saw. Um, well, live dangerously. Take a peek at these. Did he? Does he have a new deck list there, Bryce? That's okay. We can take a little peek at... We'll, we'll talk about the scamp deck list that he tried for a week <laughs> here. Did that it's fun. do anything? Was I don't it, think so. Was it productive? a productive week for him? Because a part of playing the scamp package is to emulate what Pioneer has to do to have a hammer deck, right? Mm -hmm. So it's one of... It's very good deck building thinking of if a card is good and powerful here, does that mean it's also good and powerful elsewhere? And the thing is, is while magic is vast and the player pool is vast, sometimes people just don't try things. Sure, and absolutely. now there we, we got go. That 75. We're, we're going back to a much more uh, traditional hammer list here. Mono white, cut those scamps out of there. But we'll look at this sideboard real quick. We got Dranith Magistrate, Strict Proctor, Solitude, Pithy Needle, Cursed Totem, and Leyline of the Void. Okay, this is very interesting because uh, the main part of our opponent's deck is trying to, like, Tidebinder Snapcaster, mm -hmm. these powerful ETB effects. So I think Draineth can be appealing, but it's never going to beat Counterspell and all the removal. So it feels hard to bring that in and make... Oh, I'm sorry, your Strict Proctors. I was about to say, yeah, yeah Strict and Proctor is the one you want to bring. And it's hard to bring those in and dilute your plan against a deck that already has a lot of answers for a card that you're trying to try. It carries a hammer. It's, kind of. It doesn't, it doesn't completely... It's really Go hard for it to you. carry a hammer because it counters your own Sigarda's aid triggers. Oh. Yeah, dog. Oh. Yeah, dog. The, oh, no. <laughs> the question is, is this could be a same 60 and try to kill you as fast as possible. Or if Sam's up to it, you have to remember your opponent's deck is a Snapcaster deck. And how desperate are you for a card like Leyland of the Void? That's an uh, interesting point. I don't think so. Yeah, this might just be a run it back sort of situation yeah. here. Does Kai have his deck list? I might, no. at a minimum, bring in maybe, like, two solitudes for just clearing the way. Mm -hmm. If you're just like, there's a lot of problems in front of me, let me use this for one of them. That could be fine. But this might just be a same 60, be on the play, draw a good hand, and kill them. Exactly. Yeah, we have a lot of looks at our deck here. You know, you said that hammer mulligans aggressively, mm -hmm. and it can still... I mean, Sam wasn't out of that game nope. uh, until... Kai dealt with the, the things yeah. that he played, right? Yeah, until Kai literally took everything from them. Right, <laughs> literally but used an arc Archmage term. Kai's deck, very easy to think about, right? It is blue-red, the cards that are good in the form. We're looking at Flame of Anor, Snapcaster Mage, Tidebinder Mage. Tidebinder right? Mage. Ty Tishana Tidebinder. <laughs> uh, Tidebinder Mage is a real card, I think. Um, they used to see playing Standard like five years ago. Um, but it'll be those cards paired with Counterspell, Bolts, you can almost figure out the blue-red cards that are good. Yeah, you see the shell sort of forming itself. Yep. So should be easy-peasy, possibly a deck that could very easily play Blood Moon. So at a minimum, Sam will have to be aware of that. 
when trying to play Urza Saga yep. and Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah, absolutely strong points there. We'll head back down to the Magic, though. Sam will be on the play as he lost game one, putting Kai up a game. Sam's 12th on the leaderboard, which almost puts him out of the running. I got to say, let's leave. there is a 36-point deficit between him and no Adam, but only an 11-point deficit between him and Tepper. Time to uh, fight. Time to throw some hammers at people. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Sam has been here, has had really steady attendance, has yep. just been struggling to convert. And and, uh, and it's it's very hard to have like a week or two where you got to stay late at work and suddenly things slip away. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, a testament to these players' commitment that they're able to get here so many weeks in a row, yeah. honestly. It's, it's after hard enough work. for me to get here, so I get it. <laughs> me too. I'm, I mean, I'm already here. <laughs> You're already I think I have, here. The, I have the shortest commutes. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> uh, and Sam already getting a small gift here. And it looks like Kai is the one to mulligan this game. All right. Okay. So every card less that your control opponent has, good news for your hammer deck. And every card you keep is good <laughs> for your hand. So Indeed. Agreed. Folks, if you're enjoying the content that we're producing tonight or if you've followed us in the past, make sure you hit that follow button and get notified when we go live every Wednesday night at 630. We really appreciate it and it shows us that we're doing a good job. If you enjoy Watching other TCGs as well. We stream on Thursday nights at 6.30. Our Pokemon team is absolutely fantastic. They're cracked, they, I've heard. They're <laughs> so good. Um, last week, they showcased a post-rotation meta with uh, Temporal Forces coming out. And uh, you will see more Temporal Forces gameplay tomorrow as well. So tune in for that at 6.30. All right. Let's go. I mean, who doesn't like good games being played at, like, the height of the ability to do so? Absolutely, yeah. You love to see players Whoa. good at the game. Turn one play, Horizon Canopy into Pithy, Pithy Needle, Needle, naming... Uh... Mm. Bro, I hope you hit, like, Scalding Tarn. Yeah. <laughs> or... Yeah, let's or go. Preemptive sideboarding, name engineered explosives. Mm, I believe okay. that is like one of the go to hammer plays. The thing is, is that was a very good go to play in the Rhino meta. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is how many people still have EEs? And then the question is, do they have it? And then the further question is, do they bring it in against you? Then the further, further question is, do you need to bring Needle in for it? <laughs> and the further, further question is, do you turn one slam, name it? Lot, lots of layers there. We'll see if Dakota can figure out what is it? It's it a is. scalding tarn. Heck yeah. All right. Well, the Lorian got around that and was that. able to find a red source for Kai at the very least. Nah, naming tarn is for the real gamers. Incredible. All right. We will play this. It's not a ragavan. A ragavan. A slow ragavan, though. Even though we have two mana available, Kai does mm. not like to tap out, though. So we'll leave that <laughs> blue source open. Yeah. I imagine possibly for stern scalding. Spell Pierce. Sure, any number uh, of things. Spell Pierce. We'll shock, or excuse me, bolt in the Ameria's land here and then pass back with three mana open and a chapter two Urza Saga. This is kind of hammer when you can lean back, know that your opponent's going to try to interact as much as possible. You turn your Saga into two constructs and a spell and a Shadow Spear. And it's a different plan. You I, go deal with these. They went through it really fast there. I was half expecting a tie binder to come down in response to the activation oh my there. Goodness. That would have been fun. All right. Here's here's start of the plan. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it'll be four off the four search. Beats. And this is the backup, right? What I love is in a deck to put a distraction in front of your opponent. Mm -hmm. Go deal with these. It'll give me time to like draw one or two cards and assemble the real plan. If they don't deal with the distraction, that'll kill them, but it gives me enough time to catch up. Absolutely, yeah. We'll get the Springleaf Drum off the resolution of the Urza Saga. Love this. It allows you to convert the construct you just made into mana to continue to develop your turn. Indeed, uh, and colored mana as well, so we don't just need to have an artifact here. We could play out a Sigarda's Aid or something as well. Urza oh, Saga, yeah, another land side. for a turn, all right. Keep it going here. Kai kind of shaking mm -hmm. his head at that. He's like, all right, yeah, that's a good card. And it, it keeps it going while not putting both out there to ever get blood. Oh, I was wondering if he had the Shadow Spear in hand that when I saw the Springleaf Drum. Keep All it right. in hand. Keep it safe. Sick. Okay, that's there. Now this construct is a 5-5. Five five. We'll crash in for some beats there. The question is, is is Kai... Is, he about to, is, is Archmage, Archmage uh, Charm, is it one or less? I think you can steal zeros. You can. But we're getting this Thundering Falls. And... 
I had a feeling we were getting a tap land because if Kai had a tide binder, I would have tide bindered the step one of the Urza saga, mm-hmm. and it would never tap for mana for sure. But oh, because then it go it gains it never gains its first ability. Mm-hmm. But instead, we're dress downing. And oh, these become zero zeros. No, that's really good. That's really good against those. <laughs> and this is Hammer getting splash damage from dress down being so good at shutting down the domain plan right now, mm-hmm. stripping the abilities from Scion from a turn, or straight up just killing a territorial Kavu. All right, back on Kai's turn, he'll crash in with this Ragavan created treasure, and we'll see what he hits off the top here. It is planes. a planes. That's fine. You can have it. Well, no one gets it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's always how I feel about Ragavan hits. Is like when they hit something, I'm like, you can have it. I don't need that one. <laughs> yep, yep. As long as they don't hit something that blows me out out of my own deck, you can have whatever off the monkey. We, we've we yet to see a, a Tarn. We have hit uh, I know. a Polluted Delta. Ooh, it's a fairy. Bounce the Urza Saga. The, the okay. secret okay. 100th best use of Teferi is just... It is uh, an time enchantment. walk your opponent, tell them to pick that up, hit their land drop, and just hit their saga activation. All right, replay it there. Kai has just one mana available to him. And Kai's kind of been floating one mana for a couple of turns. Mm-hmm. Deceptively, seemingly having a one mana answer to something. Sure, this Pure Steel Paladin did resolve. We do have three artifacts, now four with this Colossus Hammer mm-hmm. being cast. And no matter what, this is a draw card. So. You know, Kai couldn't bolt at any time to not allow Sam to draw a card. Mm -hmm. Is he going to remember his draw? Oh, my God. Did he just forget it? Uh, The Pierce Shield, I believe, is an ETB draw a card. Uh, so I like when it, it when it ETBs when the when the when, yeah when the equipment enters yeah yeah so then he so, doesn't get the draw yeah I misspoke Kai took the exact only moment available made sure that didn't happen and is now trying to get in there. With the little guy. All right. The the Ragavan hit him there, grabbed a ginger brute off the top, and Kai will opt to cast it, it once again. Worked for him <laughs> last right. game. I think at a minimum this might be on blocking duty for Kai, but we've already got our opponent down to 11. Mm-hmm. And a tie binder of the saga. Go to turn there. Esper Sentinel will be the creature. Sam's choice. Equip the Shadow Spear. We'll beef it up a little bit more. Just a little. And we'll pass it back. It's gain a little bit of life. I think, yeah, this Esper Sound is on blocking duty. At least we'll gain a little bit of life for our troubles. I'm starting to feel the control player squeeze. Mm, mm. I I experience that often. I do not like it. It's hard, right? Because when you get to this, like, they have four Ooh. lands in play stage. They kind of just, you expect none of your spells to do anything for the rest of the game. Like, I don't think this is going to resolve. I don't think this is going to attack. I don't think this is going to happen. Yeah, I think we, as uh, non-control players, just need to have a little maybe stronger mental fortitude because the control players are just looking for, yeah, that kind of mindset, right? Mm-hmm, like, yep. why even them, cast my spell? You yeah. give them, like, free counters. We give almost. them the freeze, yeah, yeah, exactly. But I can't help it. <laughs> I know, it's hard. As we see a forge anew getting snapcastered. And pay. then we're grabbing the do you pay? bolt. Do you pay? Oh, it's not Sam. But do you pay for the? Do you pay for the bolt, sir? Uh, oh, uh, oh, it's two. Okay. He has a bunch of Ragavan treasures. I forgot. Ah. Uh, I was like, oh, I, I, I was about to get very excited. And we shan't forge a new. We just have another <laughs> hammer still. <laughs> Toss it on back. Ooh, Kai's killed everything that can carry it, though. And we have. More than lethal, lethal yeah. Sam, Sam looks you dead in the eye and says, "Do it." <laughs> Flame and ore, shatter your hammer. Okay, I've seen enough. Let Ooh. me go home. Pick up your ball and go home. All right, Kai will win our round two feature match match with Jeskai Wizards into against Sam's Hammer Time deck. We'll head into our backup match and see what they are doing over there. A leaderboard battle. Your number six and number three seed. Let's real quick. Danny left side with Yogmoth has a Wall of Roots and an Undyed Young Wolf. On the right side, we see uh, Marty on the Leyline Rhinos with a Scion in play. Notably, no backup uh, Leyline of the Guild Pack. Looks like that got destroyed at some point. A little shrunken down Rhino and a Shardless. And a pile of two bindings have answered a Yogmoth and a Wall of Roots. Mm-hmm. That's where that minus one came from on 
of the creature on Marty's side. And uh, we have a Pendlehaven on, on Danny's, notably there. That that might be relevant at some point here. They always sneak it onto their little one ones. Yeah, sometimes you get really tripped up by that, but this scion is definitely the scariest thing here. It flies, and none of Yogmoth's creatures do. Yes. Uh, I have had a lot of people say that one of the best ways to beat Yogmoth is just attack them, and attack them fast, and attack them in the air. Mm -hmm. I will say uh, we are in sideboard games here, as Marty took game one. Uh, Danny probably has Endurance in his sideboard, uh, which might mm -hmm. make an appearance here just because of the fact that it has the keyword reach. Oh, and I think the difficulty is, looks like Danny with one card in hand, very little re low resources to use to fight back. Just checked our sideboard and put our head in our hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Facing oh. down a lot of damage here. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's chord math. That's for two. That's for <laughs> two. That's for two. What are we going to grab? That's the, for what three. are we grabbing that's helping us? Cord for three. We're on cord for three. We can cord up to three. We're cording for two. Three. Three? Why? The wall of roots tapped for mana and it's a. Ability. Oh, right. Oh, we could have corded for four. Right, but I think the thing is, is. Uh, Yogi ain't helping us here. Are we just grabbing a Gris? I think we're grabbing Endurance. Endurance? I think we're looking to block the Scion and untap and hope to draw a good card. Mm. We could... It's so awkward. Scion's a 4-4. Four four. We could get Yogmoth. Or not Yog, uh Grist. That's what I was saying, yeah. We got Haywire Might. So we courted for a larger number to check on, hey, should I do this? Okay. We found this Haywire Might. Haywire Might can unlock the Yogmoth under the Leyland Binding. You could also kill the... Cannot. So cannot. Non-creature. Oh, non-creature. Yeah, oh. they put a little little gate on this Haywire Might. Okay, then yeah. That does something. Yeah, it it gains us a couple life as well. Yeah, we so have the mana. We left the Pendlehaven open, yep. so we have mana to crack the, the Might. So this is Haywire Block Shardless to absorb that two damage. Crack Haywire on Leyland Binding to gain two more life. We will take, so we'll gain four overall to 12. Take seven in combat to five and get Yawgmoth back. But we got another cord. No, that's, that's the full resolution of the Haywire <laughs> Might. Okay. We, we got to let the players play first and then, and then uh, yeah, commentate what they do here. Might. Seems to be lining up with that little guy there, the Shardless Agent. Sure, sure. Yep. Debating, running the numbers. Marty also has this Besage you in hand. Oh. Which is fun and interesting. I guess a Besage you would be more fun on Danny's side. Yes. <laughs> I think one of the recent joys of Besage you is it's so much harder to fire them off like willy nilly in games because everyone has surveil lands uh, and you just give them a free the, search yes, for surveil. The, the very first times I cast Besage you after Karlov came out and that happened to me, I was like, oh, oh no. Yep. Like, you got to do what you got to do, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even when, like, the Triumphs were a thing, Bosejuin yep. felt I grabbed Triumphs all the good. time. I will say, can I talk about a really sweet standard play that I did in my RCQ? Yeah. With Boseju? Yeah. I was playing against Domain. Nice. And they temp locked down my stuff. And then I Boseju the temp locked down and swung for lethal, and it was super cool. That's what it's all about. I loved it. You guys should try standard. Big fan. Hey, where am I? RCQ season <laughs> ends this weekend. But there is a team team event. Yeah, it's, it's not Indian, that far away. It's in May. It's sneaking up. This Book your so tickets. Fast. I'm going to be there. Hey, where am I looking? Yep, we're blocking Shardless. We are bop, we're bopping Pumping it. Pumping the Shard. Not the Shardless, the Might. Sick. Are we just going to pop no, it? No, we yeah. can't do it. We, we got to. We can't do this. Nope, nope. Oh, yep. oh, oh. Rewind, yep. rewind. Yep, illegal targets. Pump it? Nope. Yeah, we're, yeah. Getting, we're getting we're getting the yog. Do you want to pump? Do you want to? No, because you need the mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying you can't both pump it, kill the shardless, and then exile because you don't have the mana for it. All right, binding will leave the battlefield there, as will the might gaining Danny to life, and his yog moth has returned. And we have a little bit we can throw towards the mm. doctor. <laughs> yeah, the hard part is you have to pay a life for each Yogmoth activation, yeah. but you're kind of using it here to negate a point of damage. 
So you're net neutral on the amount of damage you are going to take. And the question is, do you want to draw some cards? I mean, you have to, right? There's no way you don't win this game without drawing some cards. Yep. So the question is, do this in combat or do this later? Yep. Let's see what we get here. The Undying Creature. We will use... We could also shrink um, Marty's creatures, right? Yep. So we're putting one on the Scion now. There we go. Do another Yawgmoth. Oh, my God. Not the time for you. Get away. You're already here. Go home. So now we will take... I know we're still in combat on Marty's turn for those uh, trying oh, to keep track So here. we did all of that before blockers. The Haywire Might was moved around to think. Mm -hmm. Now we're blocking... And now we have the ability for the Young Wolf to trade with the Shard List and Yawgmoth as a 2-4 to block the 3-3 three, three Rhino and only take three in combat from the Scion and go down to five. Okay. Danny's still alive. We'll see what he's able to draw here and if he... It's Endurance. Endurance is not bad. What's that last card? We got Yogg, Endurance, and something else. I cannot figure out what it is. And a Legion's End. Is which it a grid? No, it's a Legion's, Legion's End. end. Got it, got it, got it. Which can allow us Cyborg. to, at minimum, exile this Rhino. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a fifth mana source to work with. So we have to choose. But already has their Endurance. Yep, get rid of Danny's Graveyard. Yeah, seems good. Against a Yawgmoth deck. Yep. Oh, but what's great is... It's also a creature that turns sideways. Danny's Endurance can eat the Scion. The 3-4 three, can eat up the 3-3. Three, three, now that has the negative one counter on it. Mm-hmm. So we are still, we're not quite dead though. He, he does have three to our two uh, blockers here. Yep. Go so to Marty's turn. <laughs> it is both players having like very little info of what's in their opponent's hand and just trying to jam back and forth. All right, Marty will swing out with all his creatures, flash in this endurance on Danny's side. Take a peek here. Marty has no counter magic available to him. Mm. This will resolve. Are we grabbing a, a graveyard there? Might Whoa. as well. I don't know. Well, no? it's hard. If if the cards in Marty's graveyard are cards you don't want them to draw, I'm just not putting it back. Yeah. I mean, I think they are. There's probably some footfalls or something in there. Yeah. Now we're doing kind of what we did last turn, using Yawgmoth to absorb some damage since Endurance is big enough to block the Scion. Just going to let it happen. Yeah, I don't think there's much and you can do there. take three from the Rhino down to two. Oh, we could die to Fire Ice. <laughs> that would be a heartbreaking way to go. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I would I would be in shambles if I lost to a Fire and Ice. Marty with Breeding Pool, Besaju, Lorien Revealed. Playing out the breeding pool because Marty has all the life in the world to work with. He and do. we're going to draw three off this Lorian. Sure thing. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and Danny's uh, thinking. I don't think there's any any action you have here. You just. No. No counter magic in a gold, gold Gari deck. No. And our only is like. Is there stuff you want to do before he draws counter magic, though? I think is the, the thought there. Yep. Crashing Footfalls, Shardless, and another Scion, was that? Yeah. Oh, man. That's very good. Pretty good. <laughs> Back on Danny's turn now. Drew a Catacombs. So, technically, okay. we can Legion end the Rhino, mm -hmm. and we have two blockers for the Endurance. So, we get through this turn. That's not the problem. The issue is Marty just drew three cards, and we were at two life. Exactly. Yep, we'll go back to Mari's turn here with just a, a chip and a chair. What's the exact uh, wording on Legion's End? Uh, exile a creature with mana cost two or less and all other copies with the same name in play. Okay. It's meant for clean up all the rhinos. Yeah, it seems, seems strong against rhinos, even even one even oh, one rhino. We'll get confirmation ASAP. All right, Scion has been played out, so now these green creatures have... Uh, additional trample. Yeah, they, they got they had. got they got trample 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 trample. The endurance also having trample. Mm -hmm. Trample reach. Well, not a bad combo. Oh, Marty drew salty. That's the card I think we're on the hunt for. Just really mm -hmm. trying to stop because we're kind of going like one card for one card, one card for one card. Right, we're kind of trading just like single cards back and forth, 
and subtlety is like the one that stops that flow so you can push through. Indeed. Yeah, this this Yagmoth, the quintessential card in a Yagmoth deck, of course, is kind of stymied right now due to this abysmally low life yep. total. This is what I said. If you want to know, hey, what's the best way to beat Yagmoth? Attack them. Lower mm -hmm. their life total as soon as you can. Yeah, he he just he's got a creature to put. He's got creatures to put uh, counters on and just isn't able to do anything there. There's the proliferate mode, but there's nothing we're really looking to do with that. You could keep this crashing footfalls from resolving a little bit longer. I think it's four mana to activate the proliferate. Two. It's just two. And Excuse discard me. a card. Oh, discard. Okay. That's, that's binding, a pretty significant. This might just be the card. Just It is removing one of these two blockers so that Marty can get through in combat. And we get to hold up a subtlety. So if you're looking to flash something in, I have the answer for that, too. Dig a card. Dig a card. Look for a card. Come on. Yep. We got it. Come on. What but you the got? thing is, what we see the face up subtlety. It's another Legion's Ed. It doesn't do anything. Ah. Yep, Hand of Yogmoth, Young Wolf, Verdant Catacombs. Those mm -hmm. are not the answers. Discard that, proliferate. Does not matter, and that's the game. Yeah, fetch with the land, take yourself out. And two games to zero, the Domain, Leyline, Rhinos. Still mm -hmm. out here, still crashing, and taking down what people think is the tippy top of that metagame in yeah, Yogmoth. Yeah, absolutely. People said Yogg was going to have a huge comeback now that Violent Outburst is banned. Uh, Rhino's still a very dominant deck. Uh, I think we talked about, we like the fact that a um, banner restricted announcement does not completely neuter a deck. It just uh, weakens it back down to the power level of the other decks around it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still pretty good here. Marty showing that off. Danny doing his best to take uh, Marty down. Wasn't able to do it with the cards in his hand. Uh, great stuff there. Let's look at our weekly schedule before we head into a break here. If you want to play any one of the five TCGs we support at the store currently, this is how you can do it. Tonight, of course, is Modern. Tomorrow is Commander Night and Pokemon. Friday is both FNM Standard and Legacy, as well as One Piece. Saturday is Digimon. Monday is Commander and Digimon as well. Tuesday rounds out our schedule with Lorcana replacing Pioneer and One Piece as well. We had our most highly attended Lorcana local last night, and our One Piece League kicked off as well. Okay. So if you're looking to get some money from all that gaming, come on down to Nerd Rage Gaming. Uh, with that being said, though, that wraps up round two coverage. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. See you all soon. Welcome back, folks. We're in round three of Modern League Week 11. We have two more leaderboard hot shots for you hot in the shots. booth. Ray at number four. Brian on the bubble at number eight. Ooh, the bubble. Can he stay in? He's doing well yep. tonight. The 2 -0 helps. 2 -0 oh, is very, goodness. very helpful. I think he had to take a week or two off as well. He's got he's got a little baby at home. He's got a baby. That, that little guy is much more important than some cardboard squares. So we appreciate that he was able to get some time to come out here and defend his spot. Let me see here. Um, no, he's been here like every single yeah. week, actually. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to point He's crushing out. people while taking care of a baby. Uh, Ray has a uh, Leyline Scion in their opening hand, and that's why they're keeping this beautiful seven. Uh, yeah. Seems good. Sure does. And I, not to spoil anything, but when I was giving both these players a pregame talk, they went, do you have Goblin Shaman tokens? And everyone went, yeah, me too. <laughs> so we're at least in a Fable of the Mirror Breaker mirror. <laughs> we'll see if that card can be the Mirror Breaker. All right. Pre-game actions there. Leyline for Ray. Oh. Land for Bryant on his first turn. Oh, no. And the Surveil oh, no. will put an Archon of Cruelty into the bin for Ray. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about this. Reanimator oh. is in the name of his deck. This ley line may have told you he was on a little bit of a different game plan. Yeah, uh, you can put those eight cards in anything. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, my goodness, Ray. That's the dream to play your surveil in and just oops your target into the yard. But Brian, with this turn to ice on the play, I see him do this move more than anyone else. <laughs> this also allows him to survive the persist that Ray drew off the top. Can you have so a part of this is now we don't have to deal with an Archon this turn, and we might have a chance to be able to draw possibly a Force of Negation or something else. Mm -hmm. the, They're working on they it. They literally right. grabbed it the second he walked out, <laughs> I know, Bryce. We I really know. appreciate it. We're getting there. Okay, here yeah. we go. Companion app. 
Good this, stuff. This ice is so important for Brian. Like I said, tapped out so that Ray could not cast Persist that turn. Mm -hmm. And now Brian has three mana. He's going to be able to shardless before the Archon, allowing you some fodder in the shardless agent. But also, if we have a force of negation, we're going to be able to tag that Persist, pitching hopefully a blue card from hand. All righty. We'll see. We'll see what we, yeah. we turn over here with this shardless once we're done shuffling. Yeah, Get literally. Some bodies on the board here. Archon, it's been a quick second since I've seen this card. We don't get too much creativity in the building Flying. nowadays. 6-6. Six, six. ETB and attack. They lose three, you gain three. They discard, you draw. They sack, you have an Archon. Okay. One more time. <laughs> it was a little fast. They lose three. Okay. You gain three. Mm -hmm. They discard. You draw. Mm -hmm. They sacrifice. You have Archon of Cruelty. Sure. I got Yes, I see. It's all mirrored, <laughs> but the creature half is you have Archon of Cruelty in play. Got it. Got it. All right. So we got two little rhinos, the cutest rhinos I've ever seen. Oh, my goodness. Those are Fido's. They are. Persist? Persist. Yeah. Force check? Uh-oh. We now have an Archon of Cruelty. It is a little bit smaller, but mm -hmm. still very scary. And you saw Ray use their Leyland Binding. They snuck in at the end of their turn there to eat the Shardless. Because they took the worst target to force Brian to have to sacrifice one of these rhinos. Indeed, yeah. So now we have a big flyer. Bigger than, because it's a 6-6. Six, six. Mm. Yeah, so even with the minus one, minus one counter, still bigger than this little rhino. Life tolls at 23 to We're 11. Done. We're done. Archon of Cruelty in play? I'm out of here. Brian has decided that is more than enough. Yeah. We are already done with game one. Domain Arc Reanimator will take game yeah. one there, but we'll take a look at Brian's deck list first. He's rocking a 76 card special, 61 card special in the main. We'll take a look at this, um, excuse me, sideboard here. We have Endurance, those fabled the mirror breakers we were talking about earlier. Yasharn. Yeah, I we'll talked talk Brian about into that. Yasharn. Talk about that in a second. Teferi, Time Raveler, Mystical Dispute, Wear, Tear, Force of Vigor, Supreme Verdict, and the Adam Weiss Oish. special, three Ley Lines of Sanctity. Okay. What's up? What this is a Zendikar Rising card? I know that Yasharn is an anti Yogmoth tool. Okay, it says players can't sacrifice or pay life to activate abilities. Mm. Pretty good, pretty good. I used it in Titan, and Brian went, "Well, that costs more than three. I'll put it in this." <laughs> um, very importantly here, though, it doesn't seem like it. I would imagine this matchup might be a slog, just a haymaker back and forth matchup. It's hard when your opponent sneaks in turn two, arc, turn three Archon on you. But in general, I'd expect this to be a lot of back and forth. That's where Fable of the Mirror Breaker shines. Okay. This top card on this sideboard, Endurance. You just watch an Archon go from the yard and go into play. Endurance, slam dunk. Teferi, probably a slam dunk as well. You want to either bounce stuff or you want to just be able to make sure that your interaction is the interaction that wins all the fights. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Supreme Verdict. I guess a creature-based deck seems very strong. You at minimum saw Leyline, so you know that Scion's there. And you saw Archon, so you know there's a reanimation plan. The card that cleans up, no matter what the problem is, is Supreme Verdict. All right, so then let's go back to the main board here. What are we cutting out to bring in these sideboard pieces? So we we want to keep the whole Rhinos package. Wow, we only have two Omnaths. We drew both of them that game. They were rotting in our hands. The No, we need these forces. We need these Fire Ices. We need these Ley Lines. Sounds like it's Tidebinder. I was looking at Tidebinder as well. It does negate an Archon's yeah. ETB, but a six six flyer is still and well, then, it doesn't fly anymore, but a six six is relevant. Yeah. It's one of the it's kind of the prime time effect, right? It's like when Primeval Titans in play, if you Tidebinder it, there's still just a six six, and that's hard enough. And I imagine I could look at three Tidebinders, and I can look at an endurance, a Teferi and a Supreme Verdict and weigh my options and there might be one that I clearly want. Indeed. Let's take a look at Ray's deck list here as well. Another okay. sixty one card special. Take a look at this sideboard here. His fables are in the main board, but he also has Teferi's there. Blossoming Calm, Tear Asunder, Mystical Dispute, Engineered Explosives, Curse Totem, and a full four leyline of the voids. So this is interesting. If you look at Ray's deck, this is basically the uh Kind of Gorios, but instead of putting Atraxa into play, our plan is to put Archon into play. So if you think about it that way, that at least kind of lets you think about what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I know my opponent is putting Crashing Footfalls on the stack. That's where Teferi Time Raveler is the bee's knees. <laughs> so at minimum, I want these top two Teferis. And then further down my board, I have these two copies of Engineered Explosives. Same thing. This is good for cleaning up Rhinos. 
which remember your opponent is on big rhinos, so that card is only a band-aid, but it will not <laughs> save you in this whole matchup. Uh, for that reason, you may also be after things like Terra Sunder that I sometimes recommend, just a card to bring in as your catch-all answer to whatever may be trying to stop you. Mm -hmm. Some more pre-game effects here. Another ley line of the Guild Pact on Ray's side of the field. Brian started game two as well. Put it in Dotha Triumph, and we're back on Ray's turn where he is surveilling a Fable of the Mirror Breaker into the bin. And we're griefing on turn number one, but off a tap land. So at minimum, you know that you're taking just the one thought seize. But it looks like Ray's plan might be to persist the grief next turn to get that second thought seize. Sure, why not? We'll see Charlotte's Agent, Eagles of the <gasps> North, take Crashing Eagles. Footfalls, Mystical Dispute, Eagles. Tie Binder, and Endurance. If we take the Eagles, that's thought seizing their land drop. Oh, yes, oh, Ray. Oh, boy. He's like, oh, don't mind if I don't do. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Remember, a lot of these cards in hands. Powerful, no questions asked. But the real thing is taking this eagle takes their land drop, and this top deck is incredibly important. The the Lord of the Rings land cyclers become a lot less impressive when you refer to them as a thought seizable land drop. They sure are a thought seizable land drop. And Brian shook his head, put this crashing footfalls on suspend, and sent it back to their opponent. <laughs> now, Ray knows that there's endurance in hand, but I might. Uh, I was thinking of shocking this in, casting the persist on my grief. And taking the two for one, just taking two cards away from Brian, mm -hmm. forcing him to have to endurance it, knowing that I'm already ahead. And if I can start stripping all these cards from you, that just helps me stay ahead. But now we have land drop to ferry. We do indeed. Marshlets will be the land for turn here. We also have oh, put his hand back down. I was almost I was almost <laughs> gonna spot it there. To ferry persist persist archon, I believe is the hand. To ferry persist. Persist and persist then an archon. And an archon. Hmm. So no way to make it hit the bin yet, but I don't know if it'll matter. Right, we get a little peek at Ray's deck here as he's fetching. I did see an engineered explosives go by there, so that's mm -hmm. hiding in there to be drawn at some point. <laughs> Brian uh, prepared to lower the suspend counters. Oh. 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 Did he know that was on top? Not a clue. Not at all. Just did he needed just, it to be did there. Did he just put it down? <laughs> Yeah, It was just like, yeah. this is going to be a land. I yep. manifested a land. Little baby fist bump in the top <laughs> card to go straight into play. <laughs> now for some shadowy backstreets back all right. Get a little surveil. Get that Teferi out of here because you already have one. This one's already resolved. Indeed, indeed. We will bounce. Nothing. Uh, Free draw. Oh, just bounce on nothing? <laughs> is it up to? Up to. Oh. Yeah, you can always cycle a Teferi if you really want. Brian with the cheeky, you can bounce his ley line if you want. Ray declines. <laughs> You got the mana for it. You don't have the colors for it. Yes, Ray here now going to push this persist, knowing that Brian has to do endurance pitch. But again, you just get to take two cards from them. But Can you with the Teferi? No. Right, right, so you can't. This is resolved. Yeah. <laughs> with our hand of dispute, dispute, tidebinder, endurance, all these cards are looking to flash. This Teferi saying, ah, 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 and mm -hmm. this persists just resolving. Taking the ring, which we're two turns away from, but saying that I think this is the only card in your hand that does anything, and they're not wrong. It doesn't, yeah, the only thing that gets him out of there. Hmm. The ring is an interesting choice for sure. I'm trying to think. The disputes are blank text. The tide binder is blank text. The endurance is an endurance and the shard list is blank text. Yeah, I feel like the endurance is still the grab here just because it is one mana less than the ring. Mm. But we've already um, done our reanimate, right? There's nothing to nothing to hide anymore. I guess that's fair. Yeah. I'll take persist fable and fairy back in my deck. Mhm. Mm so, and <laughs> what if we just draw third persist? Oh boy. We'll start crashing in here just for two. Just a little love tap. Mhm. Mm and we drew a Fiend's Tower, and I was wondering, I see we're playing it out here. Could have cycled. Could have cycled it, yeah. Yeah, a couple of dead cards in our hand technically right now. No reanimation targets currently. Tap land for land number three in our Hate Lush to see it. Hate to see it, but we'll take it. We'll take the Surveil. Miller Rhino, not going to happen now. Wow, and our, the Force and our, Negation as well. Yeah, I saw the Force oh. in hand. Just another dead card. This Teferi really taking over the game. Remember, Brian got one of their lands taken from them and spent two turns locked on one land. Indeed. Grief will continue to beat down here, bringing Brian to 15. 
Do you think grief is the most aptly named of the elementals? Um, it truly feels like grief. You really go through all the stages as it <laughs> slowly takes your hand in your life total. Mm, yeah, well, endurance endurance is a really good one. Yeah, to shuffle it back. When you hit yeah. your own library, that's endurance, right? Mm-hmm. And and Fury made wizards mad enough <laughs> that they banned yeah. it. Fury, Fury also very aptly named. <laughs> Subtlety is also never subtle. It's not subtle. It's subtle in the amount that it's played compared to the other elementals, maybe. In yeah. solitude, this n- that does not really <laughs> yeah. fit. This uh, hard cast endurance eaten up uh, the... Oh, no. Ray bounced our own grief with this Teferi to replay it. Bad man. Ooh, that's Mad fun. Man. I like that. I like that play. You're seeing a lot of the cards you saw from before and this force. Now you got a force as well. I think we take one of the creatures here. The tie binder is the only one that does anything. The tie binder can't do anything with the Teferi here. It attacks for three. It attacks for three. That's why it's the three. only card that does anything. Sure. I mean, the, the Shardless Agent also attacks. For two. That's why I'm getting that. That binder out of here. All right. Okay. There we go. See you later. Fetch down to 12 on Brian's side now. Ray sitting at a healthy 19. Three persists in hand. Oh, and another grief. So oh, we're <laughs> sitting with a lot of cards that don't do much with yeah, these persists and these archons. There's not too much that you even want to grief at this point. I mean, with this, the Teferi's yeah, nullifying so enough work. of these cards. But this Endurance is going to have to attack the Teferi, and we're going to have to chump block with our grief. But I I believe Ray's other card in hand is Prismatic Ending, and it might just be worth it to ending this Endurance for three just to continue to maintain this Teferi in play. Because mm. if you unlock Brian's hand, that could be very bad. I agree. I think uh, Ray, Ray's got Brian in a good spot right now with this Teferi, and will want to protect it, which he will after these attacks. We'll lose the grief there. Wendy, which tuned into stream, and I see Reanimator Life is good. I'm glad you're enjoying the contents. Hey, Wendy, me too. <laughs> All right. Me too. We had some reanimation uh, last week on stream as well with a more a traditional Gorios. Yeah. Ray, Gorios Ray. list from Valerie. Yeah, you missed it, Wendy. Uh, you want to check that VOD. We had a turn one surveillance to put an Archon and Cruelty into the graveyard. <laughs> if you're looking to reanimate, that feels good. Absolutely, yeah. It's done a lot here for sure. Ray Ray took down that game very, very quickly. Yep, did not take long at all. We have this blank Shardless Agent, just a 2-2 in play. And Ray going to continue. Grief and wear tear? Sure. Yep, the only card with text. Yep. Nice, interesting. nice counter spells. Very interesting that we didn't use the wear tear on our turn to remove the ley line. Mm-hmm. We, um, s- we spent three of our mana for turn. Do we do? Did he not have the colors? No, that's not right. We're getting back this grief. We're just continuing mm-hmm. to chuck along at Brian's hand. Just chunk after chunk. You drew a Charlotte's cheese. Yep, that one attacks. Leave you these three counter spells. Why doesn't he play it out? To have the creature on board. Yeah, that's a great question. I don't get it. It might be frustration. It might be frustration. Hmm. Yeah. You ever get in that stage in a game where everything seems to have gone so wrong mm-hmm. that you you're almost <laughs> just going through the motions? I feel like we've seen Ray turn these same four lands over and over again mm-hmm. to cast griefs. Oh, we sure Some have. Some more of the same here. I need surveil lands ASAP so I can work on it again. How about you check out nerdragegaming.com? We ship countrywide. Get them all in one package straight to your door. Leyland Binding, eat this endurance. Doesn't even get to threaten the whoop. But we Omnath, get to sneak this, in this is Omnath. really good. That's a great draw. White, blue, green, red. Easy. Resolve it. Gas. Well, okay. We could just bounce. No, we're not we're not in bouncing the, the Omnath territory here. Surveil land. We'll keep that on top. Can he cast bind? Oh, he sure can. He's got this beautiful ley line of the guild pack. Yeah. <laughs> As we have the second undercity sewer. So Ray with a real, really aggressive with our choice of mana base, but it, it sure do be working. Ley line fixes all ill. <laughs> yeah. Smack with this menaced grief. Can't be blocked by the Omnath. We'll bring Brian down to 10 now. Fetch land. Really need a fetch land. 
Remember, Brian's hand locked with... Ooh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> Nearly flew out of his hand there, so Ooh. eager to play it. But first... Rumble in the jungle. <laughs> there Such it is. Such a smart play, right? Because you forced Ray to take action first, so now you can sack your Flooded Strand. But the thing is, you're in combat, so you're going to lose the four mana, and you can't play at flash speed. <laughs> There is no spot where we were going to be able to get that second Omnath trigger. No, no. It's Teferi is a really good card. Um, it's very fun. It, it's like the thing that we've said with Orcish Bowmaster. Like, what's better than uh, one Orcish Bowmaster? It's the second one. I feel mm -hmm. like Teferi is a really good answer to a Teferi. Or like, or yeah. like a control player, you know, doesn't like to see a Teferi on the other side of the board kind of no, thing. Ooh, they do not. Yeah. So, really good effect here. And here comes a Fable. Fable. <laughs> the Mirror Breaker. This Goblin Shaman token that we've borrowed from the table next to us. Beautiful Aaron Miller token. Oh, I was going to ask. I got you. He He's done some really cool. He does like this new signature. It's so pretty. It's like a full rainbow. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Aaron really Miller's got one of the cleanest signatures. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've got a ton of art cards with his stamp on it. Spotted a mile away. I think I was supposed to, because he was at Magicon, and I think I was going to go get some stuff signed by him, and just, like, wasn't able to. There were so many things I needed to get signed yep. while I was there. I felt like I was running errands. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> kind of doobie doobie like that sometimes. For sure, but I got a lot of nice stuff that I got to bring home. Uh, do you think this is garbage time? Do you think this is garbage time? It kind of feels a little bit like garbage time, right? We're kind of just waiting. Well, Brian has three counter spells in hand. We're ditching Daddy. these two cards to our Fable, one of which is that Archon that we've waited so long to discard. Yeah, we've had so many Persists just waiting for targets. Well, those Persists persisted griefs. We're all out of... Th those are gone now. Mm. And it's like, okay, we'll, we'll put this Archon, tuck that away for later. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what happened here. This Teferi has completely dominated this game. Mm. It has uh, set the pace and kept Brian from interacting with anything that Ray wants to do. We can't pitch cast endurances in response to uh, persist. We can't counter the persist. Can't can't really. Oh do yeah. Too oh yeah. Much. Maybe hard cast eight mana. <laughs> tap it all. <laughs> Our god of cruelty. Here he goes. And Brian was at five. My boy. Brian's at two. Pitching the rhino, which I think means we know the exact hand of all them counter spells. Right. Big draw. Big draw. Yep. Okay. All right. Was it uh, an I think it was, I thought it was a tide binder. I thought I saw the the beauty of it. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian with the cheeky pass. <laughs> we know you can't take any game actions. You don't know that. No. He's 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 got a se super secret uh keyword. It's new out of uh Outlaws at Thunder Junction. It says Commit uh, a crime. It says Teferi Teferi's <laughs> specifically Teferi, Teferi can buzz does not off. work. Teferi Time Raveler is no longer a card. Cancel. Oh, yeah. Goblin Shaman attack. <laughs> no Archon attack. I love the players having a good time. They're doing a little memeing. <laughs> if Brian had Odawar, that would have felt so bad. Yeah, yeah, sure. But, like, I that's don't think that puts him in any better of a situation. <laughs> that's the Nux. That's the game. Three exact damage kills him, bringing Ray up to three and oh. I will note, let's talk about the breakdown of the pool for uh, our league. Fifth through eighth gets 5% of the pool. Ooh. Third and fourth get 15%. Oh. Second gets 20%. And first Jeez. gets 30%. Ray is currently sitting at 15% of the pool at fourth place. If he can get up to second, that gets him another 5%. I should mention we are at over $1,000 for our prize pool. So there are hefty chunks of change being played for tonight and next week. This is our current leaderboard as it stands at the end of last week, of course. Uh, players are playing right now, so positions are changing all the time. If you want to check out our leaderboard updated as soon as possible, make sure to join our Discord. That's where we post it as soon as possible. You get that nice high-res image as well. And, and make sure to follow our Twitter. We will tweet it out there before we go live next week, too. Let's head into our backup match, though, and see what they're doing over there. I see uh, some scooping ups happening. I see some scoops happening. Are we all done? We're going, going to game, to game two. two. Oh, beautiful. All right. We got our other Merfolk player in the building, Josh B, doing his best to take <laughs> down Grixis Wizards with John. He do be Josh <laughs> Josh B. Merfolken. He do be Merfolken for sure. I, I hope him and uh, May are able to compare notes at some point. Josh is sitting currently at 10th on the leaderboard. Ooh. 
<laughs> he has been gaming all week long, all these weeks long. He is new to modern, yep. I should add. Yep. He's been crushing it, taking a lot of pointers from our folks in the building to improve his gameplay and his deck. And is sitting at 10th place right now, trying to claw his way into top eight. We'll see if he's able to do it in the face of this Grixis Wizards deck here. And a very important thing to note, Josh is on a slightly different flavor of Merfolk, mm -hmm. playing Simic Merfolk, playing cards like Cenote Scout and Pick Your Poison. Pick Your Poison seems pretty good. Maybe not against a deck like Grixis Wizards, Maybe not for the Grizzly Wizzies, but... Yeah, so that might be a cut here as well. Uh, yeah, so it's fun to see a couple different flavors of Merfolk going around the building now. It's not Grixis Wizards, unless it comes from the Shinobi region of France. Otherwise, it's just sparkling control. Shout out to you, Chatter. No <laughs> idea what that means. I don't know what that means either, but I liked reading it. But I like that you interact, and I like that you're here, so thank you so much. Let's take a little peek at this Simic Merfolk. All right, this sideboard consists of Pick Your Poison, Stern Scolding, Aether Gust, Dismember, Force Negation, Hibernation, <laughs> and Chalice of the Void. What's Hibernation do? Bounce all green cards. Oh. Well, oh. At a minimum, at a minimum, cleans up all the rhinos. Mm -hmm. And if they're leyline shenaniganing, it's pick up all the girls in the club. <laughs> does it does it say non land? Yeah, green green I believe it's green creatures. We'll we'll take a peek Is at it. Green creatures? Okay. It won't matter here against Grixis Wizards. That's for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's not coming in there. <laughs> uh what may happen is uh forces force of negation cuz we need to fight back because the Grixis Wizards deck at a minimum is looking to do a lot of flash uh, instant speed style interaction. Mm -hmm. Even your Snapcaster Mage needs to find a smile to snap back, and that's a good target for your force. So I imagine cutting maybe like a subtlety, a tide binder, a little trim here, a little trim there, and find some room to get some forces in here. Absolutely. Do we have a Grixis Wizards list to look at? Let's look at that as well. I don't believe John submitted one, but this it is played in the meta. Other people play it. Uh, Kai has played it before on stream as well. So we've grabbed one off of MTG Goldfish here for you to look at. As an example, a sideboard might consist of Flusterstorm, Stern Scolding, Shouldered's Edict, Necromentia, Chalice of the Void, Engineered Explosives, Alpine Moon, Stone of Eric, and of course those Cursed Totems. At a minimum, Stern Scolding, very popular in many interactive style sideboards mm -hmm. and counters almost all the merfolk. Yeah. Svaloon, I think. Yeah. Svaloon not... and Subtlety will probably be the two cards you can't hit with it, but it will help you not stumble in the early game. So you have a certain scolding, you know you'll have a target for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Strong point there. Um, anything else we're liking here? I don't see too much, honestly. You might want a card like Shieldred's Edict just answer a card. One of the things I found when you play against Merfolk is like, they're all 3-3s three and 4-4s. Four so I feel like if you have the Edict, you're like, I just need to remove one of these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> might just be enough to subsidize alongside cards like Fatal Push and your Flamvenors to try to control what they have going on. Yeah, Shouldered's Edict also has that nice bit of text that gets around Svaloon and Ward, where oh, yeah. it's just each opponent sacrifices, right? So you don't have to uh, send mm -hmm. your, your removal at a creature. And if you can kill off everything else, might be you in a situation to easily pick off Svaloon themselves. Absolutely. We'll head back down to the action, though, here. Are you pulling up Hibernation for us? Yeah, let's yeah, get an exact gotta, text on this. We gotta take a little peek. This is like the attack, like when people were all really green permanent, so it would bounce all your lands too. Nope. What? Land, lands have no color. The lands have no color. But it gives lands have no color. But it gives them all land types. Gives them all land types. Oh. But hibernation does bounce I think the that's ley line. Still pretty good. It's still pretty good. It's interesting because I saw he also had aether gust, which is like red and green permanence, right? Mm -hmm. So it feels like a little double dipping there. Yeah, the hibernation is the board wipe, right? Mm -hmm. This does kill all rhinos because a token goes your hand cease to exist. Yeah. But the thing is, is if they have leyline, scion, rhino, rhino, tide binder, you play this <laughs> and they pick up all those creatures and the leyline. Mm. All right. Seems seems like a fun bit of tech there. Uh, Josh will be on the play here. No, John will be on the play here. Excuse me, since Josh took game one there. Uh, John had a fun little interaction with his opponent earlier in the in the matches. I don't know if we want to talk about that or should we not? Judges we not are here to help him? you, folks. <laughs> Judges are here to help you. Sometimes things get wild doing some rulings. If you want to find out, pop into the Discord. Maybe <laughs> some people will be chatting. Uh, sometimes a thing happens that you've been playing for 15 years and you've never seen happen before, and it's pretty cool. 
It's fun. Yeah. Sometimes it's fun. We're fun. having a great time. Sometimes we we make some oopsies while we're playing, and we need a judge to come over and help us fix it. We've seen it on stream. You guys, I'm sure, have seen it at home. It happens. It's all good. We're gaming. We're vibing. Th we're paying for a good good bit of money, but it's still a local. Still a local. Still a local every time. Yep. Which is why you see people playing Merfolk. Grixis Wizards. Merfolk's a good deck, Big sir. Big Rhinos. Excuse me. I didn't say Merfolk's it was Merfolk's great. I am saying that this is a great time to play the cards you like. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was Andrea Maguchi who <laughs> said, uh, life's too short, play the cards you like. Agreed. This is a game. This is a game. We had a jam. We had to hang out. Have We're here to game. some fun. And uh, I'm trying to take that to heart. It's so hard when you're like, I want to play the good cards. I want to play the best cards. But I also want to play the cards that spark joy. And you got to find somewhere somewhere in there to play the game. As soon as playing Magic feels like work, I, I stop. Mm. Right? I stop and I do a mental check. Is it just the fact that I'm playing Magic at all? Is it the deck that I've picked? Do I need to, you know take care of the other aspects of my life first and, oh, you know, yeah. put aside the game for a minute. It's always good. If if magic is not bringing you the joy that you need or the satisfaction, mm. you know, it's mm. sort of fulfillment, you take a step back, it'll always be there. I literally say, take care of you first, the game will always be there. And exactly. when it's magic, it might literally always be there. <laughs> it's been around for a minute. As and we and <laughs> it, it tends to stay here for a minute more. John here doing what a uh, blue deck in this format does, starting on the recently unbanned preordain. Josh doing the move feels as old as time for Merfolk. Turn one, Aether Vial. Really can help you fight back against the instant speed interaction of the Grixis Ooh, Wizard. Ooh, and a Cavern will do a lot of good oh, stuff there as well. I think he's probably naming Merfolk. A power. Powerfully naming Merfolk. Mm hmm You can name, like, Wizard. You can. That's the fun part about this matchup is most of these Merfolk are also Wizards. All right, we'll play out an Uncounterable Vodalian Hexcatcher there. Excuse me. Allowing we'll us pass it back. to possibly have the interaction for any of the spells John could be playing on end step or trying to spend his turns on. Yep. Very valuable card, though. I don't think we want to throw that away too, too recklessly. No. And the part that John has to worry about is Josh has this vial on one mm -hmm. and is playing a version of this deck with more one drops in it, which means we are more likely to actually have something to put in off the vial and have a large amount of aggression to push with. Yep, we have Tide Shapers, we have Cenote Scouts, and then also Dock Hands are one? Or Possibly. no, Dock Hands are two? They oh, are goodness. indeed one. Oh, they are just one? Yep. Okay, it's the activation that's two, because it's like the port. Yep, one to activate, one to play, so it kind of feels like a two It's one to activate? Same with the Tide Shaper, right? It is a one drop, but feels like a two if you're trying to kick it. Oh, it is one. I'm just I'm getting confused because I I I'm seeing like the card in my head and I see like the one and the tap symbol and I was oh yeah I was oh I get that I, yeah. I think it, I it requires it. two cost one yeah. mana one tap in for sure. John continues to be preordaining through their deck. Just go back here. Remember that upkeep trigger. Very good. Yeah, this vial on two far powerful than the vial on one because that's when all your lords start just sneaking in. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. We have a trickster as well. That already has flash, but we can play it for free if we want to. No creatures as of yet to tap down there. I think we might as well get in for some damage. Turn turn some stuff sideways here. As we say, one is not none. Get in there for a little bit. <laughs> exactly. You'd hate to l lose with your opponent at one as well. Oh, yeah. Think back to this moment as we play Vile number two. Cool, cool, cool. Sometimes it feels weird to play the second vial, but once you have a vial on like two and a vial on three or two on two, you're like, I'm. You have such strong control. It's it's better than you think because it's not um because once you know you tick up a vial too far, you can't go back down. So it's nice to yeah. sort of diversify and have, have one, one at three and have one at two. Um, and or if you're playing like um. Some other decks, sorry, I was thinking of, like, Legacy, Death and Taxes. You actually can, like, take it up to five for, like, Yorian or, or Solitude and leave another one behind as well for your little guys. Well, then you get to use the Yorian to reset it and go back to zero. Oh, oh let's, yeah, Legacy's got all <laughs> sorts of fun <laughs> stuff going on there. The Yorian's not even legal in this format. Interestingly enough, at no point did I ever play against Vile Yorian in Modern. And it, it's fun to see the difference between, like, what decks do what in what format and like seeing what pieces of the puzzles come together in different spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think I've ever seen a Yorian Aether Vile Modern deck. 
As we see John here, this Grixis Wizards deck, untapping for turn number four. Shocking for a Steam Vent, so wants their mana for something and tossing it on back. I see a Tide Binder, but you didn't need to shock your... your uh, don't we need have, to we, shock in for a Tide Binder. We have Tide Binder Spell Pierce. I think uh, that looks to be what we want all four of this mana for. Okay, Josh opting not to flash in his his Trickster there. I I feel like I disagree with that. I think we need to get in for beats. We're the aggressor at this point, and John is waiting for us to cast things. But we have an Aether Vial. We have a Cavern. Play your stuff and turn them sideways. Yep. We were talking about this before, right? With, with controlling strategies, every time you don't do something, it's like giving them a free card that they did have. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I know it's hard. It is hard. Merfolk is a hard deck to play because it's got this sort of aggro game plan, but you also want to have um, you know, answers to, to cards as well. Trickster has a block of text on it uh, that you would like to get value out of, but if your opponent's not playing creatures, yeah. play it as a vanilla 2-2. Yeah. yeah, I think Trickster might have been the one I would have just thrown out there to get the beats on. Yep. But it's it's so hard because both of you are trying to do things in instant speed, and it's kind of the old control adage, like the first one to blink is the one that loses the game. Mm. So it's kind of hard, and they're both kind of leaning back. And now you're starting to realize that you're just staring at each other, not doing something. Yeah, I guess if Josh had uh, used his vial to bring in the trickster, it could have been tide bindered. Um, <gasps> if he had taken the line to cast with the cavern, that obviously can't be interacted with. I forgot about tide bindering the literal vial. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Be really good here. And this is the part of playing this back and forth is John can now just kind of cash us in to draw two cards and move on. All right, cool. Not going to... I was curious if he was going to try and just kill like this Aether Vial on one before it gets uh, too too far. But I guess since Josh already has one, we're just chilling. And John drew an engineered, engineered explosives, which I really like on two against Merfolk. So many of the Merfolk are twos. Mm -hmm. But also doing it on one could just pop both these vials if you want to make Josh play on your terms. EE e. will come down. On two. No. Love two for controlling the folk. Funny enough, I think Josh has just a... We have the Trickster on a two, and I believe we have a Tidebinder, so we have a three in hand. Mm -hmm. But even being at some point to cash this in for a two for one might be worth it. All right, cool. Two counters on the EE e. there, and we still have mana up for Tidebinder as well. Yeah, this, this come play... Come on, Josh, put your creatures on the board! Come on, man! We can't kill him with a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, the hard thing is we need to push. Mm-hmm. And it looks like we're going to be able to use this Pick Your Poison to clear the engineered explosives. Um, So what I would recommend is rumble with your Hexcatcher, try to get the one point of damage in. Mm -hmm. But then they, if they flash in a Tide Binder, they can block it, and then they have no yep. incentive to pop the E. Yep. Oh, it's hard, it's hard. It's very hard. I think you just play the pick your poison first because yep. you have lords, and then yeah. you yep. can you can buff through uh, the tide binder. Right, you're you're kind of gonna force their hand to. Can use you? The you e. only have two, so you could trade with the tide binder still. Uh, okay, yeah. Josh is seconds away from casting this this pick your poison. There we go. Lots of mana open, so that spell pierce John has. Be used to to negate some of the, his available mana, but with these aether vials, I don't think, I don't I th think it's proper. I think John should just pop this, use this as a one for one with the hexcatcher, and know that you can't take any damage this turn. Mm -hmm. But, but we've been staring at each other with these tide binders. Right? Josh Do we want a tide binder in response? This is it. This is your moment. This yes, Josh. Yes. <laughs> yes. We've, we've, yes. We've waited, <laughs> and if you're waiting, this is what you were waiting for. Mm -hmm. And it's sacrificed that. as part of the cost, so it yeah, does not it stay there to get popped later on. Yeah, it is. And now we have a creature. Now Throw we can them all down. down. Dump them. Dump them. Get them in the water. Yeah, John was not ready. Now we have a lord. Now this is pushing for two. And now there's so much power in play. There's three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. There's ten power in play now. John, what life are you at? Uh oh. It's mm -hmm. ten. And John can have a blocker in this tie binder, but these, these fishies. They have Angelin walk. walk. And Josh can be able to use their violent too to push in this trickster. That trickster's gonna be a four four due to this double lord plan. Mm -hmm. I have found Merfolk can really turn the corners and you don't know what's happening. Oh yeah. The ring Ooh, a fog. The ring. 
Does ca- Hexcatcher say specifically instant and sorcery, or does it say non-creature? Uh, it's instant and sorcery. Dang. Yeah. Dang, mm-hmm. dang, dang. If that's true, I wish I could sacrifice some guys. It's it's very true. I've played a lot with that card. Well. Uh, it, it's usually, instant sorcery usually covers your bases. Right. With Tidebinder. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, um, Excuse me? Well, Hexcatcher sure says non-creature, and we're about to counter this ring. I have to go home. I we're don't gonna, know what just happened. We're going to stack this trickster. Can we delete the VOD? Pay, make you pay one. Make you pay one. Oh, gosh. Would you like to pay one? I thought it was instant and sorceries. Dang. Your, what am your, I thinking Your of? fish card is revoked. That's so crazy. Revoked. I know. I'm. I'm <laughs> you said the correct thing, that you feel like instant sorcery covers all your bases, and it sure does. But now we got this ring, and thankfully it covers this, too. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I definitely used it to like counter a temp lockdown this weekend. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Everybody has those days. In the words of Hannah Montana. Well, thank goodness the card's even better than I made it out to be. The the Huzzah. thing is, is we need to sack this trickster, and then one of these three relevant creatures in play. Not the push, not the push. Don't push. I push him. Counter it. Well now. Now we for sure I'm sacking this this hex catcher and pointing two pay ones at this one ring. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six power to push back with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. No, the ring is still here. Well, we have one hex catcher trigger. If you sacrifice hex catcher as the second trigger and make the ring have to be paid twice, they can't pay for both of those because they paid this played right. this push instead. So this push will answer the hex catcher. So instead, I'd like to sacrifice it as a counter spell. Right. Yeah. So sacrifice it. Well, the ring is still on the stack as of this moment. Right. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna gobble it up. Okay. Yep. Yep. Oh, we didn't respond to the trickster, so they can't sacrifice. Perfect timing from John. The trickster so they, can't be sacrificed because Hexcatcher's dead to the push now. So we can't double make them pay one because there is no Hexcatcher around for the trickster. Hexcatcher has flashed, though. Hexcatcher was already in play a long time ago. Sorry, not Hexcatcher. The trickster. Right. So we you responded put... to it not even being in play yet and pushed the Hexcatcher. Then we never had two more folks to sack. We only had the one available for sacrifice. But then... I think you might have been interested in sacrificing your tide binder to oh, make sure this ring didn't exist. Or we could just rip another hex catcher off the top. We have ring protection now. Oh, we do have ring protection now. We'll draw with our horizon land. Oh, it's a spelur. And we're in no rush. Sheesh. Keep that in your hand. Hold on to that, Josh. Vial it in. You're in no rush. You're in the driver's seat. You're I think John the like plays damnation, right? I'm I feel like we didn't look at his list proper. I don't remember. Oh, has he submitted a list ever? I don't think so. Nope, but that's a okay. We're looking at a hand of spell pierce, shieldred, tidebinder, yeah, and one more. So <laughs> the Merfolk party is here. You better draw another ring. Oh, or a big piece to interact with. Is old school curse catcher just instant and sorceries? I don't believe so. That's, so I believe that's the what... Hexcatcher is an homage. Right. Um, what does it say? Okay. It's oh, John good. drew storms. I can just be wrong. Wrath. Storms. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrath all these storms. But oh, we have two red sources. Perfect. All right. What does storms wrath do? Four to all creatures and walkers. That's a lot of damage. It is indeed a lot of damage. And and these creatures, some of these merfolk are bigger than that, but the lords themselves will die, and then they will die anyway. So I'll just shrink it down. This <laughs> start with a push, removing a lord from play so that they don't pay have the, the counter spell available. Ask him to pay the ward. Do you pay the ward? Do you pay the one? Sir, no, Josh. Do you pay the one? <sighs> and now, not having to worry about the counter spell lord, Storm's Wrath can clean up all of these. Mm-hmm. There so they'll, have, they'll have four damage. The lords will leave. It'll see that you have four damage, and now you're no longer lorded up, and you'll be done. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, Josh, you're feeling it. <laughs> you're seeing it. Yeah, because the damage is marked for the full turn. We'll lose mm-hmm. our buff. 
gonna ask him to pay for it retroactively the ward it's all good we had the mana playing casually the trigger was missed sure. but both players seem to put it on the stack and resolve it classic sure. not a big deal the important thing is i think Svalun is indestructible right now right there are two other merfolks in play so it's it's kind of cool because she'll take four damage mm -hmm. then all these will go away she'll lose indestructible see that she has four damage and she will die yeah and I'm prepared to go right now and tell them this feeling <laughs> is dead. I think they're working through the steps of that themselves. And thank you. Yeah. Dead. Who's that offhand hand from? I believe Tepper is still standing around. Oh, for one sure. Of our, one of our, <laughs> our judges. There you go. Easy peasy. There are, in fact, currently three judges out wandering playing in our <laughs> event today. There are. I love it. John Savalin getting rid of that Flame of Anor. All right. What's the best card Josh can draw here? Um, let me think. Uh, another Svalun. I think a Svalun is probably just the best thing. And yeah. The thing is, there's no way to know because all of these cards can be vialed in or flashed in exactly. or whatever. So we got John at six, Josh at eighteen. Oh, that's a good card. John, how dare you have ring shielded in the in that's the? That's a very good card. <laughs> oh boy, I think I think I would scoop right there. I'll be honest with you. Unless we drew Tidebinder to hit this ring, we did not. No. And we're going to gain six. Back up to 12 for John. Gripful now. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> Gripful. Literal seven. <laughs> no need to discard. Oh, wait. Am I? I can't tell. Either way. Oh, Look yeah. Look at that. Yep. Got this neat yep. bit of text on it. Shieldred Ring is uh, quite the combo nation. <laughs> it's synergy. It's oh, synergy. It, sh it for sure is. It's not combo. It's synergy. We vibe. Oh. <laughs> Josh going, oh, yeah, that is bad for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, discarding a Tide Binder. Just really showing you the details of what we got going on. Sure, sure. We, we know that Josh has another Tide Binder in hand. So, excuse me, John. A Tide Shaper is not a whole lot here, unfortunately. Uh, John's mana is pretty fixed at this point. Yeah, there's nothing we can really tag. There's no Saga no. or Triome or something like that. Right. There's no juicy target for it. Mm -hmm. It is a one mana 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> it is a one mana 2-2, two -two, as is Cenote Scout sometimes. Take three from this ring. John down to nine. Draw for your children. We should go back up to 11. I wonder if Josh okay. has tried playing with Jade Light Spelunker, which I play with in Standard. It's like a uh, Cenote Scout, but it's got X. Um, So yeah. it technically doesn't explore the turn if you play it on turn one like a Cenote, mm -hmm. but it's got that long form uh playability to this is it. True. There's it's, a lot of cool toys you fun. could play it's with. It's kind of fun. They, bring out, they gave us so many Merfolk recently to play with. Yeah, Ixalan. Ixalan was very good to me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great set. 10 out of 10. No notes. And John was at six moments ago, and this ring shield rate has just really skyrocketed our life total. And now a snapcaster for good measure. Yeah. I think, I think, what was the phrase you used earlier? Garbage time? Yeah. I, I have so. island tide shaper. Island tide shaper. You can have my guy. And this, this shield rate is going to make fast work of Josh's life show. We're mm -hmm. truly two combat steps away. John is about to discard another tie binder. <laughs> oh, we're, do, we're, we're a keeps pile kind of guy. Right, right. Those are the cards I want, and then the rest I yep. do not want. Storm's Wrath, Preordain, Odawara, and uh, something else. I don't know. Mm -hmm. John was showing someone off camera, not me. <laughs> Draw for turn will be a folk. The Trickster. Trickster's Trickster's fun here it don't do a whole lot go to go yeah. to draw and we'll trickster well, it real we quick can, we can trickster the shield in response to the one ring and that will prevent the most amount of life gain yeah if josh does it now we'll activate ring in response activate vial we are doing it now mm -hmm. and so john if that. i were you i'd activate in response eh, we got enough life we're fine we're good oh yeah. But it does tap the shoulder so that it cannot attack. What if we Tidebinder this Merfolk? Oh, there you go. 
So now we get to keep our children. We indeed get to keep it. Now you have a bear. <laughs> Congrats. A watery bear. It's a tardigrade. I was say, yeah, it is a tardigrade. <laughs> or a manatee, right? Sure. Crash in for six here. Block the big one. Yep, fair. Take two to eight. These merfolks have become speed bumps. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's such a horrible image in my head. Like picturing. John here drawing five with the ring now. I would at this point be incentivized to draw in my opponent's turn so that I don't have to discard all of them and really oh, keep a whole grip full. That's a very good point as well, yeah. Because your shield is keeping you very, very safe. Right? You're, you're going to go to 23 mm -hmm. before this ring deals you five. You have much, much, much a life total to work with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 23 seems like a lot <laughs> of... A lot, <laughs> a lot of life to work through there. Sorry, I was laughing at the chat message. Very importantly, I know I say this all the time. Uh, Looks is like there going to be a game three? There, there is not. I just went yeah, to look at the I, clock, and I they're think, about to have time called on them. I think they both just nodded at someone, so I think they both nodded at the time call. Josh, it's time to fight for your survival. <laughs> I mean, they should have a couple minutes of extended time due to being on coverage. Um but yeah, I don't think they're going to make it to a game three here. So this will likely end in a draw. And looks like Josh is scooping it up. John has an unbelievably controlling board state here. All right. That'll be the end of that feature match. And that was our backup match, too. So we got, we're got we seeing a lot of magic tonight. I think we've seen all of our backup matches so far. Great. More magic, please. More magic. And more magic will be coming to you right after this break. Stay tuned. Bye. It's the final match of the night here at Nerd Rage Gaming. We got May fresh, newly in town. She is here to stay, bringing the fish at 3-0. and oh, George clawing his way towards Adam's number one spot. He is number two on the leaderboard, currently 2-1. and one. And I have to announce Adam is sitting at 1-2. and two. Jabber here to fight. I think George is very close to stealing the number one spot as it stands we'll see if he can get even more points in this final match of the night we're going to start us off here with that kahira in the companion zone and some lovely fishy uh sleeves on may side of the field oh and a nice signed cavern as well very good against a blue eye control player <laughs> yeah george's maybe least favorite card <laughs> uh is cavern of souls really just altering altering his experience trying to play control and standard. They put Cavern Souls in that format, and there's Cavern Souls here too. Yep. Oh, Cavern is great in my Merfolk deck in standard, and it's great in this Merfolk deck in modern. We'll start with an Aether Vial on one, and a Meticulous Kills. Archive from George. We'll get a quick surveil there, see what we like. Shout out to the Surveillance. Two of them are very fun to say. Meticulous Archive, <laughs> very fun. And Lush Portico, very Lush fun Portico. to say. All so right. shout out to fun named land cycles. As a hedge maze and it's a prismatic a ending to take out. But the hedge maze art is so cool. They're all cool. I love how the way ma mazes, mazes is the way to just like hypnotize mm -hmm. me with artwork. It's just Absolutely. to put a maze. Now, the last god, this is indeed Merfolk versus Control yet again, but these are two different flavors of the two decks, right? May is playing a strictly mono blue version, a uh, more traditional version of Merfolk, and George is playing blue white Control versus a Grixis Control mm -hmm. deck that uh, John was playing. So I feel like we'll see a little bit of a different play style here. So well with these, I mean, we're already seeing something different. We got this uh, Silver Girl Adept in Japanese, but that's okay. I can tell you what it does. It draws a card. It's great. She shows that she has a Merfolk in hand. I don't know which one uh, she revealed there. We, we revealed a Lord. Cool. Classic classic reveal. You yep. should always suspect that your Merfolk player has a has a Lord in hand. Time for this Narset. Just a, a smidgen too late to try to catch that Silver Girl Adept. <laughs> but that's all right. Narset will still do what Narset do. And that's uh, Dig for Supreme Verdict. Yeah, wow. I felt it in my bones. <laughs> Seems good. This card, I think, Supreme Verdict stock goes up and up and up the more that the uh, Leyline Scion package is taking over. Mm -hmm. The stock of Supreme Verdict where most of their plan is, like, stop you with a force. No, no, no. When we show up with a supreme verdict, you cannot force this. This no. is resolving, and you're losing everything. Yeah, as well as the, the Scion giving Hexproof. It don't care about that either. Just get rid of all them creatures. We'll send the Adept at the Narset taking her down to one. 
George sitting at a healthy 19 still. Yeah. Hey, shout out in chat. Ooh. Yeah, this is indeed it's two heavy hitters. If you are in the Chicagoland scene, May has returned, and this is a big fight going down for for big numbers, <laughs> big points, big players. Big oh, subtlety. Oh, subtlety. There we go. Hard casted there to take out this uh, hex catcher. We'll see if May opts to put this back on top or tuck it on the bottom. Uh, I think it's a pretty good card. A flash, a flash creature in general. Very, very strong against control, no matter what its text box is. And May debating and subtlety. Oh, she's back. got her own subtlety. And the question is, what do we pitch? And love this. Pitch the Lord that you've already shown them. Save the Lord. Pitch Lord, save the Lord. Well, because you pitch a different card, they still have info by sure, your hand, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. This way you don't leak any info. You pitch what they saw. All right, back on May's turn now. We have five damage. No, four damage, excuse me. Ooh, and a mutavolt as well. Send oh, yeah. the single point of damage at the Narset to clean that up. Three more points at George. Just a couple cards in hand now for May. George sitting with a few of his own. One we know is a supreme verdict. Can't be countered either. So this hex catcher wallet wallet is pretty useful for sweepers. Yeah. Cannot deal with a supreme verdict. But the important part for pushing back is May still has this mutavolt mm -hmm. and possibly a flash creature, which means we can rebuild quickly from this supreme verdict. Mm hmm. She, she's going to ask him hey, if he wants you, to pay the one, and he's going to decline the You heck. are allowed to try to counter an uncounterable spell, yeah. but it will always be uncounterable. No, uh, Bryce tried to send a, a long goodbye at my ward creature, and I asked him, do you pay the ward? And he, said, he, said, no. he said it's uncounterable. I said, do you pay it, though? But do you pay? I love, honestly, <laughs> long goodbye. It says in brackets, this includes the ward ability. Yes, yeah. I think that's a very good uh, oracle text for new players for like a standard well, card. Well, yeah. part of it is because there is the the new morph mechanic with ward mm -hmm. so it's so prevalent in that format Absolutely. that card's job was to kill those but also let you know hey that's why this card is here the back to the game at hand here may will smack for just a single point of damage with the new hex catcher bringing george down to 13 total we'll see a solitude, solitude come out oh but we might tide bind to the etb oh we might tide bind to this etb we could here it comes. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. <laughs> nah, just kidding. There it is. With the I wonder if there was some hesitation on whether to possibly subtlety that instead. Because uh, May does have subtlety mana up. We oh, no, don't, she doesn't have two blue. Double she doesn't have two blue. Oh, my gosh. It's I very wonder, deceptive. Do you think both caverns are on Merfolk, or did she potentially <laughs> name Elemental? I think playing into your control opponent, you just can't risk it, right? You, yeah. You'll be drawing many more Merfolk than mm -hmm. you will those Elementals. Yeah. Those subtleties are here to be free. <laughs> Indeed. And, like, George is down to two cards in hand. One of them, you know, we have this solitude in play, but this isn't, like, the control, like, Overwhelming has more cards, more answers. We are at parity, and kind of these two-ish creatures in play for Merfolk, this one solitude. It really does seem like we're kind of just staring at each other. Indeed. I think the, the biggest draw or the biggest play for George right now would be, like, a Lorien revealed. Uh, that that <laughs> yeah, would just be raw cards, just right? Raw cards at this point. I'd Can I recommend the One Ring if we're looking mm -hmm. for raw cards? Mm -hmm. Or I'm getting a I'm that's getting a, a Narset feel, or it's a fairy. Oh, that's three mana. It's another Narset. The Queen. And he's gonna pick up her cards and <laughs> let that resolve. Totally fine. Sure thing. We'll see on the hunt George for is able to grab prismatic Ooh. ending. That'll do. We can just kind of clean up what's going on. The Solitude's going to do a lot of the work holding the fort down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's blank right now because of the Tide Binder, but it, it does have a body on it that blocks blocks a couple of these fish. We will and play the Pending out. Targeting the Tide Binder so if this resolves, we can get our lifelink creature back. Indeed. And we can swing as well if we're feeling feeling frisky here. Do we want to protect the Narset, though? Ooh, how about a Dith oh, yeah. member? Wow, that oh, is yeah. insane art. It's yeah. gotta be what secret layer is that from? Uh, that's from the one that was all movie posters. Oh. Yeah, and in, in the in the horror theming of Very the Very like the days. Dead or Alive, or is that a different one? I don't know if I don't know the name of it. There's so many yeah. secret layers to remember. This <laughs> one's pretty old. It came it was back when they only did them in foil. Whatever it is, uh, it's rad. It has Dismember, it has Graph Digger's Cage, it has Blasphemous Act, like oh. a lot of the stuff that you're like, oh yeah, that would make a really good like horror movie cover, mm -hmm. and they indeed do. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, the new Lord of Atlantis here, the uh, LGS promo one, alongside this Aether Vial, and well, we, we've we rebuilt. We're ready to draw some good cards. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's the Japanese Lord of Atlantis LGS promo. Oh, it's because it's the Japanese one. I was I was looking for the 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 one where he's like in the LGS. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That art? Yeah. Th- I see, I see. They know they know players love Lord of Atlantis. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of him, too. <laughs> I'm pointing at something. You don't know that she's pointing no, at a giant no one can Lord of Atlantis. See, no one can see the giant Lord of Atlantis on my desk, but he is there. He watches over me. Speaking of Lord of Atlantis, how about another one? <laughs> how about an animated Murph, uh, Mutavault? Getting there. Rumble. George, oh, come on. Oh, boy. Come on, Last George. card in his hands of solitude. You can kind of eat this Mutavault if you want to get a little land destruction action. Mm. But if you eat the Lord giving them Island Walk, you can block. Yep. And if you block the Hexcatcher, that's just a little 1-1. One, that's one. that's Gobble great. It up. Yeah, you definitely want to block the Hexcatcher there. Definitely. Damn. Get him. Bop. All right. Smack for two. But we gain from the, the Solitude. Mutavault goes back to being a land. Oh, man. Just one card in hand for May. George draws up to one as well. Can hear it a hand. But never mind, we've got that 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 secret eighth card. And very importantly, the solitude attacks for four, and George gets to gain four. And we use prismatic ending on the vial. I think George is kind of spending our cards, having a good chuckle. I yeah. don't know if I would have ending that. I was I was wondering about it too. It's the only legal target currently. I kind of feel like I wanted to hold on to it for just whenever a creature actually does show up. Sure. But here we are, Tide Shaper, kick Might it. Might as well. Oh yeah. Island Whoa, island. that is super cool looking. Y'all love K-pop sleeves? Did, Shout out to this island. Did she cut out the art of the island too? So it's like you I, can still see the Rogren through it? Oh, yeah, you can. That's awesome. That rules. That rules, May. Great choice. Cosmic Rebirth. Let's go. Oh, boy. Get, <laughs> give me. Yeah, just it's, scooping it up. It grabs a permanent or can you grab the... the permanent. S- okay. Yeah, yeah. But you also gain... <laughs> Four? Three, three, I think. Yeah, and the permanent goes straight into play. So, uh, that if Narc- it's three or less, CMC yes. three or less. So if we were grabbing that Narset or whatever, but also mm-hmm. possibly just grabbing the Solitude might just be too much to deal with. Mace yeah. saw the writing on the wall and scooped it up. Let's take a little peeksy poo at these deck of lists. All right, we've grabbed one off of Goldfish here. Uh, this is the more traditional mono blue build. We got classics that uh George didn't or not George, excuse me, Josh <laughs> didn't include in his mm. deck. Uh, we got. Uh, these dock hands back in here, this dismember as well that I don't think Josh was using. But let's take a look at this sideboard. We've got Merfolk Trickster, Subtlety, Spell Pierce, Stern Scolding, Dismember, Force Negation, Chalice of the Void, and Spreading Seas. So if you are May, you're on the hunt for if you have any copies of Force of Negation in the board. Because I think the card you're the most scared of is the One Ring. Mm. We saw that that gave trouble to Merfolk earlier, and it's one of the few cards that can kind of like stop everything for a moment and allow your control opponent to regain control of the game. For sure. Most of these other sideboard cards are for different matchups. Unless you feel like you really need Spell Pierce, it's still going to answer so much out of your control opponent. But the really important thing is a lot of these are removal or to stop cards like Rhinos that I'm just kind of after the counter magic and ready to apply my aggression. How do you feel about subtlety in the matchup? I think we already have a bunch of them. And I, I'm really worried to bring in more because it hits, I think at most, like 15, 14-ish cards from George. It feels like a lot, doesn't it? You, you don't think that's enough? The thing is, they're Teferi and Narset. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll attack and kill those. And then Solitude okay. and Subtlety. So that if you feel the concern and you want to make sure, it still acts as a pseudo counterspell esque right, for both of those cards that uh, maybe even Solitude is enough to give you that pause for concern. If you're looking at a list like this, and we already have three, maybe even May is playing with four in their main deck, I, I wouldn't doubt it. The card will definitely put in work, and at the worst, it's a 3-3 flyer. All right, let's take a look at George's deck list here. Uh, this is perhaps not completely accurate. This is the last submitted deck list he has for us here, so it might not be completely accurate, but let's take a look at this sideboard that he's working with. Of course, we got Kahira in that companion spot, Subtlety, Narset, Stern, Scolding, Dovin's Veto, Ray of Revelation, Days Undoing, Force Negation, Crumble to Dust, and Rest in Peace. So, whereas May has no interest in bringing in a card like Stern, Scolding, George is 100% George has bringing plenty in plenty of interest. Because, like we said in the last time, so much of the Merfolk deck, outside of Subtlety and Svelun, We'll be hit by these certain scoldings. Mm-hmm. And just having one mana put this on the stack, remove your thing, 
We can then reserve the prismatic endings in our main deck for dealing with vials, maybe even force of negation out of the main the sideboard for dealing with vial to make sure that your stern scoldings are the most active as well as the rest of your counter magic. So I imagine at a minimum stern scoldings and we're also much more interested in that subtlety and mm -hmm. even possibly these forces, but kind of as forces to fight forces and to fight Aether Vial. Right. I think we might see uh, a s quite a stack, yeah, a stack. stack up. <laughs> they sure indeed do all be blue cards. So Indeed. We'll head back into the action here, though. This might be the final game of the night. We might get one more game of Magic after that. Regardless, though, make sure you hit that follow button so you don't miss the action next week. That's We're live point. every Wednesday night, 6.30 Central Standard Time. We'll be here. You'll be here. We'll have a good time. If you're enjoying it even more, hit a subscribe button and give us a little of those Bezo bucks. If you have Amazon Prime, you have a free Twitch Prime every single month. If you use it on us, we'd super appreciate it. Regardless, we appreciate you hanging in. Hanging in chat with us. <laughs> Silver Girl Adept Resolve, show you a hex catcher. We, sh we must show the hex catcher as a part of casting the spell. Mm -hmm. George goes, thanks for the free info. Here's a stern scolding. <laughs> and fetching up Island. Just straight up Island. Mm -hmm. uh, treating the merfolk as a deck that can apply aggression, which it absolutely is. Under saying that either the lands in your hand or the ones you'll find later will clean up the mana yeah. enough. No need to take the damage. I love the the difference in uh, basics here. We've got these like secret layer ones on May side of the board, and then beta basics <laughs> from George. Right, they really fight back and forth at each other. Indeed, indeed, both ends of the spectrum. Is George doing the not so funny thing tonight? Brickman, I don't know what you're asking, and George is playing normal. I think straight George is playing white control. George deck, yeah. Yeah, these are. This we, is tried and true, just normal blue white control. We had we had meme week on on the week I took off, uh, and I think we are too serious about the points race <laughs> at this point in time to bring any sort of spice into our deck. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Leyland? we're just playing normal, just normal, no. straight up blue white control cards. Getting ourselves a hedge maze. And interesting, may pass back with two mana. Oh no, nothing to do. Don't what could worry. Could it be? What could it be? Could it be a creature? It could be like twelve with different things out of this deck, right? It could be a hex catcher. It could be a trickster, though I don't think those are I mean Could no. it be the Lord we saw earlier, now yeah. in stack, now in play. There it is. Yeah, the easiest same thing. May is playing smart. We've never leaked information, right? Mm -hmm. We showed this Lord from the Silver Gill. That is the lore that we are going to play now off instant speed. Tide Shaper, Ooh. kick it. Give me your give me your white source. Oh, give me the green source. Yeah. Interesting. What what does George play with green? Kahira? Cosmic Rebirth. Cosmic and Rebirth. Pen, and pending for three. Okay. So okay. possibly saving our bigger plays later. Oh. It doesn't matter. He had the flooded strain as well. He could have fetched four first. Uh, but we'll see a pending take care of the the hex catcher there, with too much mana up. There's there's no need to sacrifice those. Major card and quickly, Sugarhead. I think missing land drops a couple of turns in a row now. Mm. The hard part is is while Merfolk does work at flash speed, does apply aggression. You need those lands to continue to apply it. You want to start double spelling. You want to start holding up interaction and pushing your creatures through. It's very hard when you're locked on lands. Mm -hmm. Tide Shaper is uh, pretty good here. Uh, you saw May point out that it is actually three points of damage because George <laughs> controls an island. George indeed controls many an island. Yeah, he controls one that May made into an island, and he's got his, one of his own. Fetch out a, ro a Zagoth Triumph here. That is me. a Zagoth. It's Force Negation is in May's hand here. I think I see two more Lord of Atlantis. I saw the same Lords. That's That's crazy. We can only play one of those a turn. And generally, you want to be playing more than one spell per turn against this <laughs> yeah. control deck, or at least playing one and then having mana up for a second. And I think we're feeding one of this force, and we are answering the prismatic ending on our Lord, just trying to maintain our board state. But two for wanting ourselves to do so feels rough. You can see the look on May's face. And George continuing to make land drops, fetching for cards, I think looking to continue to interact. Yeah, yeah, this is a rough spot to be in. We'll see a ley line binding come down here. Yep. Snatch Under, that lord. The lord. Lone 2-2, two, two, but our opponent Ooh. is at 10, so we don't need to push that much. Drew a land for turn, but it's Merfolk really works in twos, right? Like you need, <laughs> right. <laughs> need a little bit more there. Three is an awkward number to be at. Basically the same as two. 
All right, just pass back. Well, no, excuse me. Deshaun is tied by an across three. Yeah. Very and important. Then we pass with that extra lord in hand. So from the info we know from scouting above, <laughs> we are looking to cast either a two and a one, all at flash speed, or a tide binder, or even just try to threaten it while we continue to push for damage. All right. George, going to take a second to think here. He's got two cards in hand. Oh. I don't know what they are. Have, have you spotted them yet? No, but... Okay. Uh, we'll find out in a second here. Yeah. It's a hard cast main main uh, phase I solitude. We, yeah, we I think we passed turn and did it on May's turn to force May to burn three mana on George's oh, turn and then force the mana. Upkeep? Yeah. Oh. Force May's whole turn to be this stuff. All right, yeah. So then the tide binder will trade with the solitude. Doesn't have lifelink because of the tide binder. We'll just have a tide binder on May's side of the field and the ley line on George's. He's at eight to May's full twenty. But he's definitely not out of yeah. it yet. George is trying to start applying the blue eye control squeeze. May fought back, drew our lands. Oh, Narset's a great last card to have in hand. That'll help him refuel a little bit here, especially since May didn't have any way to counter it. N Narset grabs Narset. Uh, ever dig through time for dig through time? Because <laughs> here it is. Toss it back over to May. Using our mana main phase. Big three, big Svaloon. George with one card in hand. We know that one card is Narset. Mm -hmm. So this draw set and this Narset activation need to be good to us. One, two, three, four. We need like a... Oh, the fairy oh can delay the problem. That's not bad. May is your Maze. last card. Yeah. Blue card. Subtlety, it is. Whoa. But we only have... This failure and the draw for the draw for turn was the leyline binding. Oh my gosh, this game is crazy. So rude, George. Rude. Uh, he's bullying the new girl. As Stop. Yep, reveals the last card known is that Narset. It may take George a little while, but this might be the turning point. Oh Lord, not bad, not M bad. Might as well. This Teferi off the top from the subtlety. Bounce from the Lord the, from the top rope. It's Teferi. <laughs> yep. Bounce your card. Draw mine. Oh, man. The Narset you Replace. know about. Reset. Dig a little deeper. Hmm. Yeah, I think if George finds Verdict, that might be one of the, like, the last straws. Oh. Even for his Matic ending, we he can slowly he, fight it on did, a one Did you one. see him decline to take the one ring there? Oh. Took a pending instead. Yeah, we're kind of fighting one card for one card, so not the worst. Narset ah. will find us something. Shut down the Zagoth Triumph with this Tide Shaper and our Lord. Good two draws. Do you maybe do you maybe not take the one ring because she plays uh Tishana's Tide Binder? And and he's like, Oh, that could just be like a blank card. Possibly. George here finding the the uh <laughs> Supreme Verdict, cleaning Very up all good. the work May tried to put together. <laughs> I think George passing on the ring understanding that might not be what the game is about at this point and trying not to walk into these cards. Mm -hmm. May forced to play this hex catcher at, at sorcery speed here due to the, the Teferi. Teferi. Oh, Teferi. You know, you know what Bryce said to me the other day? Oh no. He said, we need Teferi in standard. And I said, you, <laughs> that you sounds like a domain player to me. You shut up. Yeah. Absolutely refuse. I will stop playing standard. Can I get it on enchantment? No, no, we're already we're already getting some planeswalkers in OTJ. All right, you can have you can play with those toys. All you right, get one walker a set. <laughs> yeah, you're. We're getting uh, what's it? We're getting Oko back, right? Yeah. Go play with him. I've read it. He's great. Cosmic Rebirth, Narsa being returned to play. May possibly had not seen uh the little bit of spice in Cosmic <laughs> Rebirth. Taking a little check of what all it can do, gain some life, get yeah. you this free Narset, and Re continue digging. Remember Aftermath? I do. I actually I remember Aftermath fondly. Yeah. Yeah, big fan. Interesting. Gave us Nissa, gave us Cosmic Rebirth, gave us Blot Out. Gave us Copper Coat Vanguard. Gave us Obnixilis Kingpin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gave us... Hmm. Some... 45 odd cards besides that. Booting of the Mute of All again, eaten by the Solitude, trying to go to combat, but boy, does it not matter. <laughs> George played it before May decided where to attack with it. 
Uh, counterspell proper, meaning the tight shaper that May had left around. And now it's time to pick up Kahira, play the Solitude, Rumble. So now Life Total are going to be moving four up for George, four down for May. It's time to draw a counterspell, push, and be in these final moments. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. We got a big card off the top. It's another Lord. And, and another counterspell. Counterspell. And now George gets to attack for seven this turn. Get in there with Kahira and the pumped up Solitude. Mm -hmm. Switch life totals here. 11 to 18. Play the One Ring. Get your protection. <laughs> Tap the One Ring. Draw those cards because now you've got tons more life total to work with. Untap. Big rips. Whoa. It was Phelan. Phelan's the best rip. It's not going to stick around too long, I don't think. Uh, it would like to block, but Teferi will say no. Exactly, exactly. We're going to push for another seven, put May down to four, and we need to answer just May's next turn. And mm -hmm. we'll be able to push through for those last few points of damage. All right, we'll cast the Svalun. Meet a subtlety, subtlety. Put it on top. Make them do it. Fast turn. <laughs> Maybe in a great sport. And that's the game. Congratulations to George on Blue White Control, our number two seed in the league, fighting, fighting, fighting to scramble up. And next week, we might just see them fight for spot number one. Should we do some math live no. on stream? Should, okay, we'll leave it in mystery. Leave it to the Discord. Ind indeed. Let's bring up the Discord. Speaking of, can we get that graphic real quick, producer? Thank you so much. If you want to check out... The leaderboard graphic, uh, chat with any of our players, get access to exclusive deals, join our Discord where you can get all of that and more. I will be in there later tonight posting the results of tonight because it's very important we get that information out as soon as possible because it's super relevant. We have one more week of this Modern League left. Um, and then we're going to chill for a little bit, I think. We're going to chill for a little we're bit. We're going to chill for a little bit, let people play some fun decks, hang out, and then I think we're going to reconvene League possibly in mid-May. So if you are at home and you're in the area and you want to play in the next League, you, you were bummed that you missed out on this one, uh, check out the Discord for announcements on when that is going to restart. If you want to buy singles from NerdRageGaming.com, you can do that. You we can have do it. Thousands of cards for you to buy, in fact. Lots of the cards that you saw on stream tonight and plenty more. If there's one that you want that you don't see that we have in stock, add it to your wish list and get notified immediately as soon as we list it because we're listing more cards every day. We ship countrywide. You can schedule for event pickup at series events, and you can also schedule for in-store pickup. Speaking of the series, our next event is exactly a month away on April 20th and oh, 21st. No. Release weekend for OTJ. I'm going to be there in a cowboy hat, bringing in a modern showdown and legacy trial. Spike that modern showdown and immediately qualify for our championship event, which is a $35,000 prize pool. And the winner goes to the Pro Tour as well. With uh, that showdown, you also get your own custom token from Inkling Customs. And of course, we got to support the legacy friends out there. So we got a whole 5K trial for you to plan. We, of course, have legacy side events at all of our series events as well. And we're looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, is there anything else we want to go over before we head out for tonight? That's going to do it for should me. We, should yeah. we, do you have the, the full schedule right there? Ooh, a yeah. little if, shout out what's in the future. If, if you can make it out to Minneapolis, it is a little far out of our reach. I think it's the furthest place that we travel to. We have two more events a little bit closer to home in the first half of the year. Indianapolis is our team event. Double 10K weekend as well. Modern and Team Trios, which is Modern, Standard, and Pioneer. So if you play any of those formats, head on over to Indianapolis. We're giving away a ton of prize money. And then in June, we'll be in St. Louis for another showdown of Pioneer and a Modern Trial. Lots of ways to qualify for our championship event. Head on over to NerdRageGaming.com and read the article if you have any questions about doing that. The series also has its own Discord that you can join and ask questions there. For example, if you're looking for a teammate for Indianapolis, I already see people asking on Twitter, I've asking on the Discord. It. Yeah, people are already starting to make their plans for it. Make sure get those teammates ready, get those books flight, <laughs> get those flights get booked, them. get those books flight. Yeah, book them. Anyway, um, it has been a pleasure to commentate for uh, our coverage tonight. You have all been a fantastic audience, and Dom, you've been a fantastic commentator. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, folks, for tuning in. Tuning in. We will see you next week. Doodles. Bye.